recently after non sitting on this day of uh, the 9th february 2022 this live broadcast is uh, brought to you by the parliamentary broadcasting unit in partnership with the parliamentary broadcasting unit in the order paper this afternoon There are a number of motions that the House will be considering this afternoon. There is a special motion on the consideration of uh, the nominee for appointment to the office of a member of the Salaries and Remuneration Commission. This is a debate that members had an opportunity to air their views concerning a report by the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning on Tuesday in the afternoon sitting where members shared their views on, the, on this particular nominee. And this afternoon there will be this particular special motion where a question will be put for members to make a decision on whether they are in agreement with the report on the vetting of a nominee for appointment as a member of the Salaries and Remuneration Commission representing the National Police Service Commission whether the House will approve or disapprove the appointment of Ms. Elizabeth Wangoi Mushiri as a member of the Salaries and Remuneration Commission to, the, to represent the National Police Service Commission. This is in accordance with provisions of Article 230, subsection 2, paragraph B and V of the Constitution. At the entrance of the National Assembly Chambers, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Justin Muturi, is stepping in and he will be overseeing this afternoon session or rather this afternoon sitting. I will now hand you over for the live broadcast that is brought to you by Parliamentary Broadcasting Unit in cooperation with Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. My name is Kam Chemenza. Good afternoon. beseech you to behold to behold with your abundant favor as your servants whom you've been pleased to call to the performance of important trust in this republic. Let your blessings descend upon us here assembled and grant that we treat and consider all matters that shall come at our deliberation in so just and faithful manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of our country and of those whose interests were committed to our charge. Amen.
including the quorum bell. All right, uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Justin Muturi, has uh, ordered that uh, the quorum bell be rung for 10 minutes. Uh, this is to give time for the members who have not checked into the house to be able to walk into the chambers and join the other members for business of the house to kick off. This is according to the standing order that before the house business kicks off at any particular sitting, that the quorum of uh, the members, the requisite number of the members present in the house uh, be at uh, 50 members. So the bell will now ring for 10 minutes to enable members walk into the chambers for the business of this afternoon to continue. On the other paper, there is a bill, the Copyright Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 44 of uh, 2021. Uh, this one is by the Chairperson Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning that is uh, set to be read for the second time and a question uh, be put. The bill seeks to amend the Copyright Act to provide for fair formula for sharing of revenue from uh, ring back tunes uh, between the artist or copyright holders and the telecommunications companies. The bill provides uh, that the artist should get a greater share of the revenue at 52%. The bill also proposed to repeal the provisions on takedown notices and requirements that all of internet service providers and application for injunction. It is intended to remove uh, the ambiguity in the role of the internet service provider Further, it is to align the act as there are already legal remedies provided for. So that is one of the bills lined up in the order paper this afternoon that will be read for the second time. Members uh, to debate on it and a question uh, to be put. A special motion uh, that will be a resumption of uh, Tuesday's afternoon uh, a debate on the consideration of a nominee for appointment to the office of a member of the Salaries and Remuneration Commission. A question will be put on whether the House will approve the appointment of Ms. Elizabeth Wangoi Mushiri as a member of the Salaries and Remuneration Commission to represent the National Police Service Commission in accordance with the provisions of Article 230, Subsection 2, Paragraph B and V of the Constitution. Chief Whip, Honorable Emmanuel Wangwe there, walking into the chambers. There is also a motion on the report of the committee of the whole house on its consideration of the industrial training amendment bill National Assembly Bill Number Four of 2019 by Honorable Jude Njomo. Uh, this is uh, a debate that uh, took place uh, uh, this morning. All right. Uh, looks like the quorum has been achieved. I will now hand you over for the live broadcast. Good afternoon.
Mr. We now have quorum. We have quorum. We have quorum. Order number one, administration of oath. Order number two, communication from the chair. Order number three, messages. Order number four, petitions. Other members, uh, as you know, Provisional Standing Order 225-2B requires that I report to the House any petition other than those presented by a member. And further, Article 119 of the Constitution provides for the right of any person to petition Parliament to consider any matter within its authority, including petitioning the House to enact, amend, and or repeal any legislation. In this regard, therefore, honor members wish to report the House that my office has received a petition from a Mr. Patrick Caberia of ID card number 22319488 calling for, in brackets, amendment to the Universities Act 2012 in order to provide for the engagement of alumni, associations, and other stakeholders in resuscitating, rejuvenating, and supporting public universities in Kenya. Close the quotes. The petitioner who introduces himself as the executive director of Power Africa, which is a civil society organization specializing in socioeconomic development and governance, bemoans what he terms as a sand state of public universities in the country. He highlights poor leadership, mismanagement, deteriorating debt levels, lack of inclusivity, lack of accountability, failure to comply with gender and regional balance and inadequate public participation are some of the ills facing these institutions of higher learning. In particular, he views the exclusion of alumni organizations and other stakeholders in decision making as a root cause of this ongoing concern, which has led to some universities to face near collapse, auction of university property, as well as public ridicule. He is thus convinced that involvement of alumni associations would go a long way in addressing the aforementioned challenges as well as in securing support, national pride, prosperity, and global competitiveness of universities through the resultant improvement in quality standards and management. Honor members, the petitioner seeks the intervention of this house in amending the Universities Act 2012 in order to, among other things, one, replace the word may in section 42 of the act with the word shall in order to compel universities to establish alumni associations and two, empower university alumni associations to nominate representatives to the respective university councils, university senates, management boards, committees and other organs in addition to man managing an endowment fund. Honourable members, having determined that the matters raised by the petitioner are well within the authority of this House, I order and direct that pursuant to the provision of standing order 227.1, the petition be committed to the Departmental Committee on Education and Research. The committee is required to consider the petition, bearing in mind that the House is already seized of the University's Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 35 of 2021, and report its findings to the House and the petitioner in accordance with the provisions of standing order 227, subsection 2. I thank you. Next. Next. Sorry, I can see a few members who want to comment on this. You know, it's very interesting that uh, on the normal speaking list, the first person is the Honorable Ole Sankok. And uh, on the column for interventions, the first person is none other than the same Honorable Sankok. <laughs> Thank the you very, very much, the, Honorable. The, the early bird that catches the womb. Yes, exactly. Honorable Speaker, you know, uh, I come here before you and I leave after you because I have to earn from my sweat after working here, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, you have taught me a lot. As our leader, when we are a presidential candidate, 
and that is why we really do support you. Honorable Speaker, I support the petition because our universities are, have really deteriorated in terms of education. It, is, it was just the other time that so many degrees were declared null and void and that they are not marketable, Honorable Speaker, after very, students uh, using their time and resources in studying, Honorable Speaker. So what the petitioner is requesting is that alumni be involved in uh, alumni, be involved in the management of the university, which are really concur and in decision-making, Honorable Speaker, and I do support. Honorable Speaker, if you allow me one minute, there is somebody by the name Anatis, by the name Eric Omondi, who is just gauged outside parliament here, Honorable Speaker, and he wanted us to start a discussion of 75% uh, play of context, context, local context, contents, with uh, contents, contents, local contents, 75% content. play of local contents, contents, contents within contents. our audiovisual <laughs> media, uh, Honorable Speaker. And I think he have the point, Honorable Speaker, because Tanzania and Uganda have done the same. So, Honorable Speaker, because he's gauge outside, and I have a key here, to the gauge, and I will only go and open now that you have given me the permission uh, to start the conversation. He told me once the conversation started, then I'll go and open for him to be released. So I support the petition, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Manzo, Honorable Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the alumni of any university are very important, and uh, ordinarily people are proud of the university they went to. Like, I'm very sure that uh, people who went to University of Nairobi are very proud and have very good memories of their own university. Mr. Speaker, the university. Mr. Speaker, today it's, it's appalling that uh, students are even cooking in the hostels. They no longer enjoy the privileges we once enjoyed. They, 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 they never underwent the, the, the good life uh, one, once upon a time the universities lived. And I believe if the alumni are, uh, alumni are, are involved in one way or another, like secondary, somebody to the Senate, or or whatever, whatever level of management of the university will help much more. And even uh, some of the former students could come back and teach at the same university or lead it. And I think, Mr. Speaker, this petition is valid. We need to support it so that we can revive our universities uh, and make sure that uh, even other students from other countries would like to come and study in our universities. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Sosion. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Speaker. This uh, petition is extremely legitimate. And uh, the role of alumni in having a say in the running of universities is indeed essential, considering the provisions of good governance in our constitution, Article 10 of public participation. This group of stakeholders must be involved in the day-to-day -day running of institutions and have a greater say and therefore there will be need, even as this petition goes to the Education Committee, to look at the real legal framework so that their role is entrenched and it is cut in law. It will not be a mere wish or pronouncement, uh, particularly at this time when universities are collapsing. Uh, we know universities are collapsing out of uh, poor funding. There is need to have universities be funded at least at 2% of the GDP to achieve their mission in research and uh, to be funded also substantially so that they can achieve their mission of teaching and community development. This uh, petition is valid and uh, the committee should be able to dispose of this uh, petition at a shorter time in the best interest of our education system. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Member for Rangwe. I thank you so much, Honorable Speaker. I rise up on two matters. <coughs> One, I saw Honorable Sankok uh, uh, speak without his mask on, and I've made also this observation with several members of the, uh, of the National Assembly. I don't know if we are now officially allowed not to wear our masks. There is no social distancing, and uh, I don't know if we are allowed now not to uh, follow the, the COVID protocol. Having said that, uh, I think this uh, petition is very valid. Uh, Honorable Speaker, at Tajeton University, there is a cohort of students, medical students, who have been in that university close to eight years to earn a basic degree. And uh, uh, there are general many, many issues with our public universities now. There is perennial strike, there is perennial uh, pending closures of these universities. 
And I think that even more needs to be done other than including alumni in the running and management of these universities. I think more needs to be done even to salvage our, our universities from uh, complete extinction. So I should think, Honorable Speaker, that this uh, uh, petition is valid and needs to be looked at on a better matter. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Member for Marakwati West. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I also wish to make some comments on this particular petition. Honorable Speaker, if alumni are involved in the management of the universities, the universities will change. They'll, be, they'll change for the better because those who have gone to university, to those uh, universities, we will have a lot of interest. We'll have a lot of bright about the universities, but it looks like the current management of the universities don't have really interest in the institutions. That's why most of them are run down. Uh, the bright of universities that we used to know, like University of Nairobi, Kenyatta University, have gone down. So I think it is important that we involve uh, those who studied there in the past, even high schools, so that they, they retain their lost glory. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I support. Honorable Danita Gatti. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to support uh, this petition. And Mr. Speaker, I do not know why we have not thought of it in this house, Mr. Speaker, because I know the role that alumni associations play in enhancing you know, education, for example. Mr. Speaker, so many times I see, I am a graduate, for example, of, uh, of um, Kenyatta University locally here, Mr. Speaker, and any time I feel like I want to give back to my university, I have to go and request the, the VC to give me a chance to do something, Mr. Speaker. And for me, if this is something that we can put uh, as a, as a, as a, as a, with a structure, Mr. Speaker, it can help. Mr. Speaker, I also happen to be a graduate of Columbia University in New York City. Mr. Speaker, Columbia University has its offices in Nairobi here, where I am an, an alumni, together with, uh, with the former CJ, uh, 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 Dr. Willie Mutunga, and Smokin Wanjala, and so many other Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, who are alumni of Columbia in Kenya. And we give back to Columbia, Mr. Speaker, in so many ways, encouraging students who want to go abroad to study, and so many other things, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, for me, the whole thing of uh, establishing alumni association for me, Mr. Speaker, is right before this house. And Mr. Speaker, once we have that, Mr. Speaker, many of us, even members of parliament who are seated in this house, will be able to give back, Mr. Speaker, to mentoring our students, to helping Mr. Speaker, you know, tackle issues that uh, affect education in this, in this, uh, in this uh, country. Mr. Speaker, even as questions, Mr. Speaker, and uh, so many issues appear even before parliamentary committee on education, Mr. Speaker, alumni are able to actually give the input to ensure that you know, education, Mr. Speaker, in this country is actually something that we take uh, seriously and we go, uh, uh, we take on board. So, Mr. Speaker, allow me to support and thank the petitioner for bringing this petition before this humble house. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Member for Kamukunji. To do. You didn't know what, what you wanted. You placed an intervention. I wanted to. Even yesterday I had requested. No, not yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to also add my voice uh, to support this important uh, 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 issue on the university and alumni. I can also uh, tell you that I, my university, although it has been uh, many years since I left it, continues to follow me, my university in the United States. I'm a graduate of uh, uh, Tufts University, Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy. Uh, and they seek my support. I contribute to their well-being. I sponsor some students. And therefore, uh, here at, in Kenya, none of the universities put a lot of emphasis on supporting the, uh, and seeking the support of the alumni. I think it is important to emphasize the critical role of, of these people who have been educated in those institutions, who are holding senior position. For example, the Nairobi University could make millions uh, uh, and get millions of contributions because the entire creme de la creme of the Kenyan leadership is from that university. And it can even be funded sufficiently uh, by the support of the alumni. Therefore, I consider the alumni as an important part of any education institution, 
let them learn also from other uh, experiences like the United States uh, where they nurture and continue to uh, support and hold um, their old students as part of the university establishment and involve them in the decisions uh, of the university. For example, recently my college changed its um, colors and uh, the alumni community made such an outcry, they reversed that decision and retained the old colors and they're now consulting all the students all around the world on how they can go forward in rebranding the institution uh, for the future. So I support uh, Mr. Speaker. Member for Daegu South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I do think that the petitioner is making a good case. Because when you think about it, the alumni of any university hold the institutional memory of the institution. Whatever ideas they have for the universities are actually great ideas that can be put into use, especially at a time like this, when public universities are under a big attack from cartels that want to run education to become a private enterprise. Mr. Speaker, I am an alumni of Kenyatta University. And while I was at Kenyatta University, the best thing I was known for is comedy. And comedy is an art that can pay hustlers, Mr. Speaker. I could have some ideas that could help Kenyatta University to institute good ideas on how creative economy can be brought up within the universities. And talking of the creative economy, as we speak now, members, there is a hustler outside parliament who is locked in a cage, who is championing for 75% airtime for local content on our, on our stations, our radio stations, our TV stations, and any other platform. So members, kindly let us support this drive to have local content on our TV stations, on our radio stations, and Honorable Sankok and I will report to this hustler who is locked in a cage outside the parliament that the parliament is ready to support 75% of our population who are the youth who are involved in the visual and performing arts in this country. Let us do what is right for the artists. Let us do what is right for the country. Let us do what is right for the youth. And I do support the petitioner on the issue of involving the alumni. I can see Honorable Sankok is in possession of the key on the cage that Eric Omondi is locked in. So soon after this, we shall report to the uh, creative economy uh, sector that we are actually unlocking our artists because this house is ready to pass 75% content of their time for our artists. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Thank you, Kamozo. <laughs> <laughs> Kamozo. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I would like to uh, say that this petition actually makes some sense. And uh, Mr. Speaker, the issue of alumni in universities would actually, if we allowed the alumni to actively participate in universities, it would help grow universities in leaps and bounds. My university, I'm an alumni of Kenyatta University for both my uh, bachelor's and my master's degree. But, uh, and they know I'm a member of parliament, but they have never even tried to consult, even invite me. Once I tried to enter the gates there, I say I want to pay courtesy call to the VC, they stopped me at the gate. They didn't know how important an alumni is, and not just an alumni, but an alumni who is a member of parliament. When they had issues, Kenyatta University had issues here with the Kenyatta Hospital, referral hospital uh, in, in our committee. I was there trying to help my university, and I told the vice chancellor, you know, I'm an, alum an alumni. You, what issues do you have? But these vice chancellors don't seem to understand the importance of alumni associations and alumni of universities such that they could help raise funds from them. I'm also an alumni of Pennsylvania State University. But I make a contribution each month to that university because they recognize me. They send me, me emails. If they have an event, they inform me. And I make one or two dollars contribution there. So countries out there know the value of alumni. But our vice chancellors here, most of them who have actually studied outside this country, they have studied in the United States, they have studied in Britain and many other countries. They cannot bring best practices from those universities to come and help the universities here. I do not know what, who they serve or what they serve. But I think we need to change the culture of managing universities so that we can strengthen alumni association and also partnership with companies, partnership with big organizations so that they can help education. It's very sad when a student of medicine drops out 
of our university because it does not have fees, and yet alumni association would have helped that student pursue a, a degree and help this country. So Mr. Speaker, I would like to contribute this and actually pass a message to the vice chancellors. They need to up their game so that we can make our universities better in this country. I thank you. Member for Kitui West. Thank you, Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. L let me say that I, I support this uh, petition on the involvement of alumina in the management of universities. Um, the, the, there are very many advantages of the alumina uh, being involved in the running of the universities, um, especially um, since they have gone through this education, the, th that education system in the universities, they can serve as role models and also amend our students. And this would mean that uh, there the are many strikes which, which we witness some of them, most of the time will actually be reduced because uh, the alumni acting as role models. They will see people have also made it in life and they will also give counsel to, the, to our students. The alumni would also help um, in coming up with the best curriculum uh, because they are, they are exposed to the market, and since they're in the market, the alumina won't know which, which curriculum, which, which subjects should be taught in the universities. Instead of just uh, bringing up uh, uh, students on graduates who, do not, who are not even required in the market, since the alumina are in the market, they will be able to advise um, the universities on the best um, subjects to be taught. Um, the alumni also have um, business connections and they can also organize for the students, for the um, graduates to also get jobs and also direct them in the right way to actually study and also be observed into the market. Into the, market. Um, the alumni, would, uh, it would also be advantageous to them because they would also have network and form connections which will also help them in the businesses. And in so doing, they'll be able to observe these uh, graduates into, the, into getting some jobs. And they would also give good ideas to the universities uh, so that the, uh, the universities are run better. Um, the alumni will also be happy to even uh, ensure that the universities are run better and, uh, than the way they left them. And in doing so, the education system in, the, in our country would largely uh, improve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support the petition. My own interpretation of the body language of uh, the Honorable John Olagwaloch is that he has been unable to press the, the intervention button. But uh, since I can see your name, no, now, you've, now you've touched it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, an in-depth examination of this petition by the committee will disclose that it raises very fundamental issues, very pertinent issues, that go beyond just amending the law to include alumni in the composition of the Senate and the councils. Mr. Speaker, I disagree with Honorable Sosion. The problem with the university is not underfunding. It's actually management. And if the alumni can input management skills in our universities, the better. Honorable Gogo has just mentioned that Egerton University, their students who had taken eight years for five year or six year courses. Mr. Speaker, it is even worse at Moy University School of Medicine, where medical students who are on a six year course are already taking more than six, eight and a half years in that university. If students at the Moy Medical School, some are coming from very poor families, would they be able to continue as students in that university? Mr. Speaker, I think the time has come where the House should take a hint from what this Kenyan has now said in that petition. Issues to do with financial management and also general management of the universities. So, so, that, so that the issues like nepotism are also removed from these universities. Mr. Speaker, if this petition is dealt with the way I think it should be dealt with by the Education Committee, then action should be taken to amend the law, include alumni, and reduce cases of mismanagement of finances and nepotism at universities. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Finally, member for Daraka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me add my voice to this, and especially due to the fact that in the Western world, alumni associations are very important in the running of institutions, running from university to even high schools. Uh, I know for sure that some universities in Kenya have tried to form alumni associations so that they are able to tap the talent from old students of that university. The Catholic University of East Af Eastern Africa, we have um, even Nairobi University trying to form that association. These associations are vitally important. And one, they are ordinarily used in fundraising so that needy students going to those universities are actually assisted. They are also important in uh, the day-to-day -day running of those universities to ensure that there are no breaches of either law or either management, financial accounting, etc., etc. As we amend the Universities Act to include the alumni, I also believe that we should be looking at the Education Act so that we can cascade this down to our high schools. Many high schools have very important persons being old girls, old boys of those schools, but no one makes use of them because they do not have these associations which are very important for purposes of education. I am an alumni of Mangu High School. We do not have a strong old boys association for that matter. I have lost Kabarak High School, which used to be a public school. Now it's a private school. Again, we would have difficulties with this. But if we really had a law that is in place, we are able to, go to circumvent, we are able to go around problems associated with the alumni, the old boys, or the old girls of our schools. I therefore support this petition. To the on uh, education. Now, honor members, uh, I've, been, I've been informed that uh, several committees are uh, simultaneously, and I, and, I, and I also confirmed that I approved uh, sittings for committees uh, during uh, plenary. So I would arrange uh, the order paper so that we go straight to order number eight. We shall come back to order number five. Proceed. Order number eight, the Copyright Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill number 44 of 2021. Question to be put. Honourable members, uh, debate on this, on this motion was concluded yesterday. What remained was a question to be put, which I hereby do, that the Copyright Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill number 44 of 2021, be read a second time. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? Aye. Will as many as of that opinion say nay? The eyes have it. A bill for an act of parliament to amend the Copyright Act and for connected purposes. Next. Nine, ten, eleven. Order number nine, special motion. Consideration of nominee for appointment to the office of a member of the Salaries and Remuneration Commission. Question to be put. Now, the, the member who, the member for the Great South wants to pick a quarrel with the member for Kiambu Township. Uh, Honour members, this reorganization affects the order paper up to order number 14. Again, honor members, debate on this motion was concluded. What, was re what remains is the question to be put, which I hereby do, that taking into consideration the findings of the Department of Committee on Finance and National Planning in its report on the vetting of nominee for appointment as a member of the Salaries and Remuneration Commission representing the National Police Service Commission, laid on the table of the House on Thursday, February 
February 3, 2022, and pursuant to provisions of Article 250, Clause 2, Paragraph B of the Constitution, Section 7 of the Salaries and Remuneration Commission Act of 2010, and Sections 3 and 8 of the Public Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act of 2011, this House approves the appointment of Ms. Elizabeth Wangui Mushiri as a member of the Salaries and Remuneration Commission to represent the National Police Service Commission in accordance with the provisions of Article 230, Clause 2, Paragraphs B and V of the Constitution. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. As many of contrary opinion say nay. The eyes of it. Next one. Order number 10, report of a committee of the whole house on its consideration of industrial training amendment bill, National Assembly Bill number four of 2019. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that the Industrial Training Amendment Bill, National, Bi National Assembly Bill Number 4 of 2019, be now read at that time. And I also request Honorable uh, Wangwe uh, to second. Honorable Wangwe. Sorry, eh? sorry, Honorable Judy Jomo, you 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 requesting that the, the the bill be read at that time, isn't it? Very well. Let, let's proceed to read the bill for agreement. Now we put the question first. Uh, I put the question, which is that this house do agree with the report of the committee of the whole house on its consideration of the industrial training. Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 4 of 2019. Will as many as that opinion say aye? aye. As many of the country opinion say nay? The eyes of it. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that the Industrial Training Amendment Bill, National Bill Number 4 of 2019, be now read at that time. And I request Honorable Wangwe to second. Honorable Wangwe. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I do second. Very well, Honorable Members, I propose a question, which is that the Industrial Training Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 4 of 2019, be now read at that time. The desire of the house that I put the question. I therefore put the question, which is that the Industrial Training Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill Number Four of 2019, we now read a third time. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Will as many as of the contrary opinion say nay? The eyes of it. A bill for an act of Parliament to amend the Industrial Training Act. Well, that concludes that. The Honorable Judy Jomo, you have uh, a bill to your credit, among, in addition to the others that you have uh, been pushing through. Next. Order number 11, motion. A report of a committee of the whole house on its consideration of the employment amendment bill number two, National Assembly Bill Number 79 of 2019. Honorable Gideon Ketel. <coughs> what do you mean? I bet, no, is it to agree for agreement? Has the question been put? Mover. Hmm? No, it is 
to our agreement. Nobody, nobody, nobody was moved by the others who agreed that the material is. Really Sorry, Honorable Ketel, I'm informed that uh, you could take your seat. I'm informed that uh, the question for agreement with the committee was uh, done in the morning. So what remains is for me to propose the question. Yeah, to propose the question that um, the employment amendment number two bill National Assembly Bill number 79 of 2019, we now rent a third time. Are you sure this, all those other processes were done? Order members, order, order. I'm informed that uh, the committee did report to the House, but there was no quorum for, for agreement, for agreement. So, one of members, I start from uh, proposing that this house now do agree with the committee in the same report. Will as many as that opinion say aye? Aye. Will as many as the contrary opinion say nay? The eyes have it. Move on. Honorable Speaker, sir, I beg to move that the Employment Amendment Bill Number Two, Bill. National Assembly Bill Number 79 of 2019, 2019 be now read a third time, and I also request Honorable Richard Tongi to second. Honorable Tongi. Honorable Speaker, aware of the unemployment situation in the country and the challenges the youth face, Honorable Speaker, especially when they are seeking for employment. Uh, they require certificate of good conduct. They require so many clearances, which money they are supposed to use as transport is consumed by so doing. So this bill will cure that, Honorable Speaker, and I second. I therefore propose the question, which is that the Employment Amendment Number 2 Bill National Assembly, Assembly Bill Number 79 of 2019 be now read a third time. I now put the question, 
which is that the Employment Amendment Number Two Bill, National Assembly Bill Number Seventy Nine of 29, 2019, be now read a third time. Will as many as that opinion say aye? Aye. Will as many as the country opinion say nay? The eyes of it. A bill for an act of parliament to amend the Employment Act. Next order. Order number 12, motion. Appointment of members to the Committee on Members, Services, and Facilities. Leader of Majorities, Chairman of the Selection Committee. Yes, Honorable uh, Speaker, I beg to move that pursuant to the provisions of study order number 175 and 212B3, uh, 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 this House approves the appointment of the following members to the Committee on Member Services and Facilities. Number one, the Honorable Ezekiel Machogu Mbaki, MP. The Honorable Dr. <coughs> Swarup Majan Mishra, MP. The Honorable Samuel Moroto Chumel, MP. The Honorable Rehema Hassan, MP. The Honorable Rigadi Gachagua, MP. The Honorable Charity Kathambi Chepkoni, MP. The Honorable Elisha Odiambo, MP. The Honorable Bernard Otieno Okoth, MP. The Honorable Engineer Zambia Dadias Kithua, MP. The Honorable Christopher Wangaya Aseka, MP. The Honorable John Walter Owino, MP. The Honorable Elsie Mohanda, MP. The Honorable Generali Nixon Kip Kiprotich Koril, MP. The Honorable Beatrice Nkada Nyaga, MP. The Honorable Kimani Ishungwa, MP. Honorable uh, Speaker, members, uh, this is a session of committee has to be renewed at the beginning of every session and uh, the whips have agreed and the selection committee did agree to renew the names as they were in the last committee for continuity. I beg to move. Two seconds. Yes, and Honorable uh, Speaker, the, the Honorable uh, Sankok will second. <laughs> Honorable Sankok. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. I do second. Members, uh, I propose a question, which is a pursuant the provision of standing order 173 and standing orders 175 and 212B, subsection 3. This house approves the appointment of the following members to the Committee on Member Services and Facilities. Uh, the Honorable Ezekiel Machogu Ombaki, MP. The Honorable Dr. Swaru Manjan Mishra, MP. The Honorable Samuel Moroto Chumer, MP. The Honorable Rehema Hassan MP, the Honorable Regade Gachagua MP, the Honorable Charity Kadambi Chepkoni MP, the Honorable Elisha Odiambo MP, the Honorable Bernard Otieno Koth MP, the Honorable Engineer Zambia Thaddeus Kithua MP, the Honorable Christopher Angaya Aseka MP, the Honorable John Walter Wino MP, the Honorable Elsie Mohanda MP, the Honorable General Nixon Kiprotich Koril MP, the Honorable Beatrice Nkatha Nyaga MP, the Honorable Kimani Chungwa MP. Our members, being the result, they asked to put the question. I put the question, which is that pursuant to the provision of standing orders 175 and 212B, subsection 3, this House approves the appointment of the members as rendered out to the Committee of Members, Services, and Facilities. Will as many as that opinion say aye? As many of the country opinions say nay. The eyes of it. Next order. Order number 13. Motion. Appointment of members to the Committee on Parliamentary Powers and Privileges. Yeah, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that pursuant the provisions of studying order number 15, 1A2 of the Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act of 2017. And studying order 175, this house approves the appointment of the following members to the Committee of Parliamentary Powers and Privileges in addition to the members specified under section, 150, section 15, 1A1 of the said act. And the new members, it's the Honorable Josephat Kafinga Washira, MP, the Honorable Anthony Gediaka Kiai, MP, the Honorable Vincent uh, Kipkrui, Tuei MP, the Honorable Francis Chachuganya MP, the Honorable Didimas 
uh, Wekesa Baraza Mutua, MP, the Honorable Gladwell Churiot, MP, the Honorable Andrew Mwadime, MP, the Honorable Omar Mwinyishimba, MP, the Honorable James Onyango Oyo, MP, the Honorable Danson uh, Mwashako uh, Mwakuona, Mwakuona, MP, the Honorable Oscar Kipchumba Sudi, MP, the Honorable Johanna Neno, MP, the Honorable Wario Kalisha Gufu, MP, and Honorable Members, uh, Speaker, again, we are maintaining this committee in exactly uh, the same format as it was in the last session, again, for the same thing of uh, continuity. And uh, I beg to move and request the Honorable uh, Wangwe to second. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I do second. Now, well, our members, I, I just look at the, name, the names and I'm wondering whether these are people to serve in the Committee of Powers and Privileges. I don't know. Anybody? <laughs> but I, I don't know. Is the, the, the Chairman of Selection <laughs> Committee. <laughs> anyway, when our members, I, I propose the question which is that pursuant to provisions of section 15, subsection 1, paragraph A, Roman 2 of the Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act 2017 and Standing Order 175, this House approves the appointment of the following members to the Committee of Parliamentary Powers and Privileges in addition to the member specified under section 15, subsection 1, Paragraph A, Roman 1 of the said Act. Number one, I think there is a, there is a mistake here. <laughs> because, 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 because the rules, the rules we have are that if somebody is a chair of another committee, they cannot be, and I can see the first name is a chair. But uh, I think that's something that uh, maybe the Leader of majority should uh, to look at the Honorable Josephat Kabinga Washira, who is the chair of the uh, Committee on Labor. The Honorable Anthony Gidiaka Kiai, MP. The Honorable Vincent Kipkurui Tuwe, MP. The Honorable Francis Chachuganya, MP. All those have been members. The Honorable Didimas Kesa Barasa Mutua, MP. The Honorable Gladwell Cheruyot, MP. The Honorable the Honorable Andrew Madime MP, the Honorable Omar Mwini Shimbwa MP, the Honorable James Onyango Koyo MP, the Honorable Danson Mwashako Mokuoma MP, the Honorable Oscar Kipchumba Sudi MP, <laughs> the Honorable Johanna Ngeno MP, the Honorable Wario Kalicha Gufu MP. Now I think um, in, in, the, the, in light of uh, just the, 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 that the, the point I've, I've raised with regard to the first person, just, just to be fair to any other member that maybe the, you know, the selection panel should uh, consider. But it's important that at least uh, members be in committees. Every member should serve in, a, in some committee. But I think uh, for the Honorable Kabinga Washira, so you, 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 you. So the, uh, Honorable Kimunya, you could, uh, you, could uh, you could amend by removing yeah. that. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I think this was an oversight. Uh, my apologies. Because uh, the Honorable Joseph Kafinga used to be a member of this committee. Yes. And on, when he was uh, then appointed chair of uh, 
labor, uh, the, the records may not have been amended. So when we ask for the committee to be replicated as it is, his name was done, but we can, I would want to ask the House that we uh, delete, we ignore the, the first name and approve the rest. No, in an amended form by, uh, because we would make the replacement, uh, because right now every member is in a committee. There's no member who doesn't have a committee, but I would like to uh, get the selection committee. We look for who else we need to, to bring in there to strengthen the committee. So for now, we take it, it has 12 members. Yes. Yes. So we, number one is not part of the motion. It's not part of the motion. Thank you. That's the amendment. Yes. Honorable Nikal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I think we are dealing with an extremely important motion here. This is the committee that actually regulates our conduct. It actually concerned on how we are seen in the public, how the public sees us. And Mr. Speaker, if we start with even that single amendment, it is then clear that the selection committee didn't look serious into the matter. Mr. Speaker, if you can see it on first sight, how come the committee didn't see it? So there is obvious evidence that the committee didn't do a good job. They just said, pass it. We can't really allow that process. These are extremely important committee. And Mr. Speaker, without going into details, as you are going through the names, people actually react in a way that the public would. Because there are some that we know ourselves, we know how we conduct ourselves. And I think those are things that the committee sitting in a committee can actually look at. To that extent, Mr. Speaker, I would oppose this and send this back to the selection committee to look at it seriously. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Milo Diambo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me also um, indicate that I, I want to agree with Honorable Nikal. I know the majority leader is uh, uh, overwhelmed with a lot of work in the, on, the, on the floor of the House, but also outside. But Mr. Speaker, I've raised this on the floor of the House before, and I'll raise it again. We need to take the National Assembly serious. And it is us who will make people respect this House. Why is it that people normally, when they compare Senate and the National Assembly, they make this House look like a House of Jokers? Mr. Speaker, there are certain things, practices, customs that we are doing away with in this House, and we are actually reducing our dignity as a house and reducing this house to a house of councillors, Mr. Speaker. So we need to be serious, even the people that we put in certain committees, Mr. Speaker. Again, as Honorable Nikal says, without a, a casting aspersions on specific members, we know each other, Mr. Speaker. You cannot put me in a committee uh, that seeks to remove women from the house. And you cannot put people in a committee on privileges, which is basically a house that, uh, a committee that's supposed to seek decorum and honor in the house. I mean, we know each other. Give us, put us where our strengths are. If you want one of some members, put them in uh, uh, defense and, you know, the, where the people are fighting military, uh, that relate to military defense, beating other people, put them in those committees, but not serious committees like uh, privileges. I've served in this committee before, Mr. Speaker, and I think we need to, to, to be serious about how we handle this. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. I oppose. You know, you know, you know there is a, this, even as you contribute, um, I, want, I am inclined to actually step down this motion for only one reason. I have no quarrel with uh, anybody who proposed, but um, because in any event, I have already indicated in the past that um, I don't, I, I no longer feel uh, uh, 
that I should uh, chair that committee. I think that we should amend the act. Uh, either we do as happens in other jurisdictions, uh, or, uh, or we just uh, give it, let, let it be like any other committee of the house. Yeah. But I think it is not right also, it's not fair. In a house where, where we have so many ladies, that this committee has only one lady, I think. That one I didn't even see. That, <laughs> that, that, that alone, I think, is. That is uh, unconstitutional, it's, Mr. It's, you know, 13 members and only one, or even 12, it's only, one, only one is a lady, I think, uh, seems to honorable Swipan. That one, it should be removed. It should not even be discussed. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, <clears throat> I, I stand to oppose the motion. Uh, one, on the basis of uh, the, the gender imbalance, honorable speaker. Um, but uh, having said that I'm opposing, you know, listening to the sentiments of members of this house, uh, trying to insinuate that we have some members who are more serious than others, who are more honorable than others. Mr. Speaker, I think uh, that is not in order. I think every of the 347 members of, of uh, uh, 349 members of parliament have earned their way into this house, uh, Mr. Speaker, and no one has the right to uh, prefect or to try and rank others as more important or more deserving. I think anybody can sit in any committee of this house. But Mr. Speaker, on the basis of the gender imbalance, and then again having a chairperson, again chairing another committee, Mr. Speaker, I think uh, there is more need to there is need for more thought to go into the list. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Chandra Mose. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I also wish to uh, actually oppose and say that. Uh, just as you have said, Honorable Speaker, uh, the selection committee should relook re into th th that matter seriously. Uh, also, Honorable Speaker, we have professionals in this house, so much so that it's not the question that this one is superior to the other, but what we are basically saying that we should also tap into the professional advantage that we have, like Honorable Nikal is a doctor, and when he's in the, in the committee of health, I am sure he helps a lot to, you know, deal with um, certain salient issues that are of a professional nature. The committee of powers and privileges, uh, honorable speaker, also needs to tap into some professional talent, and which would be of help when you are dealing with issues that they arise. Therefore, honorable speaker, I want to concur with you that it's important that the selection committee really looks into that list. Of course, also to, you know, also bring in some level of uh, professional uh, input. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. There's a good reason why, just on that, on that, on the issue of gender, because surely I'm aware that in the previous committee, the Honorable Beatrice Cornes was a member. And I think she's not in this committee, she's no longer in, the, in this one. So, you know, it, that's why I'm saying, I looked at it and the, I looked, the, the issue of gender is very worrying. Um, I know the Honorable Gladwell uh, Chiriot has been a member, but uh, she, she is not yeah, The Honorable Vincent, uh, to where, maybe you could comment because uh, you, are, you are actually. Uh, Honorable Tuwe is, uh, where is it? Honorable Tuwe, your name is not here. Maybe you could, 
Who else? Who, who else is that? I think this one. I think that's an auto. I don't seem to see one. Just move, move. Oh gosh. Yeah. Proceed. Proceed now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I want to say that we had uh, Cradwell. Honorable Cradwell, the women rep Baringo, and we had uh, Beatrice Cornes, uh, the MP uh, from Bomet, yes. and I find that uh, their contribution and their expertise and also knowledge and issues that we have handled together had a lot to do with wisdom and also experience in terms of their backgrounds and understanding of issues. It is my sincere request that they should be considered because as we move towards the end of our term, they have a lot that they have learned and they have been trained with us in matters to do with <clears throat> powers and privilege. And also we have actually, we had actually bonded well and I would wish that uh, they should be considered if possible. Another member of the committee, Honorable Jude Jomo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am a former member of this committee. And I can say that if the committee has only one lady, then it, has, it is it's not properly constituted. And I would urge the selection committee to really consider the strengths of members who they put in different committees so that they can bring their strengths to this committee. Mr. Speaker, this is the only committee which has had held, uh, is the only committee which had held a meeting in a toilet. I remember in one of the investigations. Yes, in one of the investigations we were doing, we had to go and receive information from a toilet. Now, if it was a ladies' toilet and we didn't have a toilet, we didn't have ladies, they would not show us how to navigate through those corridors of the toilet. So it is very, very important, very, very important that this committee is properly constituted and it has gender because there are matters that uh, are gender in nature that needs to be considered and we get opinions from uh, every, every gender. So, Mr. Speaker, I oppose this and I recommend that the um, the selection committee sits down and uh, gives us a properly constituted committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think, honourable members, uh, for those reasons, even without 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 more, you, you know, you you are, are you are you are an addition. But but no no. Are you sure? You have been a member of this committee. Remember the. Remember, I'm the one who I'm the one who chairs this committee. I've never seen you. <laughs> then you don't attend. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no but you, you know, you, you know, you, I know you so well that uh, there's no way that you would be appearing, <laughs> and, and I fail to notice you. Speaker, I think I've attended a meeting where you are not the chair at that moment. <coughs> but, Speaker, <laughs> I've even gone for a trip in this committee, on this committee. Uh -huh. Speaker, I think um, I just wanted to mention something other than the gender issue, which actually you've stood down the, 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 the motion. I also wanted to mention one, one thing, Speaker, especially on comments, which some of the members were trying to, to bring up. I think it was majorly because of some names, which I think uh, partly I'm one of those names, and my friend uh, Oscar Sudi is another name, and my friend uh, Didmas Barasa is one of those names. But speaker, looking at us critically, you know, I was in a school called Maseno High School, speaker where discipline has been the highest, I mean, in the whole country. It has never gone for a strike since 1906. And the selection of prefects and the captains of that school were based on those students now, honorable who Ngeno, have been very on, disturbing. Honorable, honorable, <coughs> Ngeno, honorable Ngeno, since we want to, I want to direct that this motion be stood down. Yes. I think we can get that uh, history about Maseno and the prefects uh, <laughs> maybe when we retire, retreat for tea. I was threatened, Speaker, I was threatened by, by, by some information which members were trying to bring. So that when you're going back for selection, you don't remove some of us, basically because of that. I, I wanted to bring that up. 
that when, when, when we had those students who have been the most disturbing students in the whole school, being privates, the school managed all those problems. So, Speaker, when you look at us, some of us might be what we are, but outside this house. But when you come to this house, Speaker, I have been the most disciplined member in this house, Speaker. <laughs> Kushinda, everybody else, even, even more than Milio Diambo, who has been dancing her way all around this house, Speaker, she doesn't even, she doesn't even qualify to speak about indiscipline in this house. Some of us have been very disciplined in this house, Speaker, and we deserve to be disciplining people like Milio Diambo, and the rest, and the likes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sorry, sorry, honor members. Um, now, the, 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 surely, let's not. Uh, can we? Can we just finish this one? <laughs> no, no, honorable media, don't, 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 don't react. <laughs> but we know you to be a very able and conscientious member of this house. Now, now we, we, this motion is uh, referred back to the Committee on Selection under the provisions of standing order number 47.3 and for, to go and look into the is issues of um, provided for in uh, standing order 174 on the question of gender and, uh, and uh, 170. One, 173 on gender and 174 3b on the question of chairing of committees because they, 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 are, they are specifically provided for that uh, a person who is a chair should not uh, be a member of another committee and then that issue of gender in 173 so uh, it's uh, referred back to the committee on selection to go and uh, look into those issues Well, uh, you know, you know, the honourable, the honourable Tuway can tell you that uh, the committee has an occasion to deal with uh, a disciplined case involving one of the members of the committee. So, 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 even as we, and that's why, I, I, anyway, I'll be making my presentation when we when we come to reviewing the standing orders, and uh, because I think it's uh, it, it's only fair that we look at some of these issues. Um, the, the, please do just just deal with, look at the who it is that you put in. Uh, it's only that I think the Honourable Johanna Ngeno became a member when um, I had already appointed somebody to to chair, uh, the, which was I think the yeah the, the fifth session. But I, otherwise, I see most of the members who are here are, 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 are in the last committee. Now, 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 but we have already now referred it back to the Committee on Selection. So let them go and uh, look at it. You sit in that Committee on Honorable Sankok. That's what I had you shout something like that. Now, now you will address it now in the, in the Committee of Selection. Yes. Um, let's go to motion number, standing on, I mean, order number 14. Order number 14, motion. Further changes to the membership of various committees. Leader Majority. Yes, Honorable Speaker, uh, I beg to move that pursuant to the provisions of study order number 173 and further to the resolutions of the House of December 5th, uh, 2017, uh, 15th of July 2020, 11th of February 2021, uh, 4th of May 2021, and 13th of October 2021, appointing members into various committees 
This House approves the appointment of the following members to the respective committees as specified hereunder. Number one, the Honorable Edan Kenan Welier to move to the Select Committee on National from, from the Select Committee on National Cohesion and Equal Opportunity to the Departmental Committee on Defense and Foreign Relations. Number two, the Honorable Jeremiah Ngayu Kioni, MP, to move from the Constitutional Implementation Oversight Committee to the Departmental Committee on Energy. Number three, the Honorable Khatib Abdallah Moshetani, MP, to move from the Departmental Committee on Lands to the Departmental Committee on Trade, Industry, and Cooperatives. And four, the Honorable Alois uh, Musa Lentoimaga, MP, to move from the Departmental Committee on Trade, Industry, and Cooperatives to the Constitutional Implementation Oversight Committee. Uh, number five, the Honorable Ayub Savula, MP, to move from the Departmental Committee on Trade, Industry, and Cooperatives to the Select Committee on Regional Integration. Uh, number six, the Honorable Abdikaim Osman Am Mohammed, MP, to move from the Departmental Committee on Energy to the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock. Number seven, the Honorable Gavoni Mushomba, MP, to move from the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock to the Departmental Committee on Communication, Information, and Innovation. Number eight, the Honorable Kato Ole Metito Judah, MP, to be appointed a member of the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock. Number nine, the Honorable David Gikaria, MP, to be appointed a member of the Departmental Committee on Environment and Natural Resources. Number 10, the Honorable Jafet Kareke Mbioki to be appointed a member of the Departmental Committee on Trade, Industry, and Cooperatives. Number 11, the Honorable William Kipkemoy Kisang, MP, to be appointed a member of the Departmental Committee on Lands. Number 12, the Honorable Ali Wario, MP, to be appointed a member of the Departmental Committee on Energy. And number 13, the Honorable Johanna Ngeno, MP, to be appointed a member of the Select Committee on National Cohesion and Equal Opportunity. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, these changes are occasioned by the changes that you announced last week, uh, which uh, removed some people who were chairman and who had only one committee, and hence we now uh, allocating them to uh, specific committees uh, so that every member can participate in a, in a committee. Um, it also comes to, as a result of some members also requesting, like the Honorable Johanna Ngeno, requesting to be given an extra committee because he's, uh, he's now settled nicely and he's actually contributing very well in the House uh, of late. And, uh, and, and hence, we believe he can add a lot of value on issues of national cohesion and equal opportunity for, for the same reasons he has explained before this house. And, no, and, and, and uh, also, Honorable Speaker, I, I believe uh, some of these changes, uh, again, it's all, it's all consequential changes to the changes that took place last week to rebalance all the various uh, committees. And, uh, and, and whereas uh, members, the Honorable Wamushomba, I know, had requested to move from livestock because they find that there are two from Kiambu in the same committee on agriculture, and hence uh, can best use her where she is actually uh, her experience in, in terms of communication and information. So basically, I think uh, it's, it's kind of a well-balanced list that has gone through a lot of uh, consultations and rebalancing, and I would wish that uh, the House approve this list, which would also help now uh, committees to be full cons fully constituted, and they can now uh, conduct uh, all the other business, including uh, elections tomorrow, to fill up the positions, the vacancies that are, that are uh, occasioned by the changes uh, last week that were announced by the chair from uh, the speaker. So, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move and uh, request the Honorable Wangwe, the whip, to second. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I do second the motion as uh, elaborated by the majority leader and the chair committee on selection. Honorable Speaker, these names were really consulted, and most of the members, personally, I had to talk to them and share with them the changes that are likely to happen 
And so, Honorable Speaker, we were in agreement that the changes have been done uh, fairly and uh, the distribution is uh, well taken care of, Honorable Speaker. With that, Honorable Speaker, I beg to second. Honourable members, I propose a question which is that pursuant to provision of standing order 173 and further to the resolutions of the House of 5th December 2017, 15th July 2020, 11th February 2021, 4th May 2021, and 13th October 2021, appointing members into various committees, this House approves the appointment of the following members to the respective committees as specified here under. The Honorable Adam Kainan Welie, MP, to move from the Select Committee on National Cohesion and Equal Opportunity to the Departmental Committee on Defense and Foreign Relations. The Honorable Jeremiah Ngayokioni, MP, to move from the Constitutional Implementation Oversight Committee to the Departmental Committee on Energy. The Honorable Khatib Abdallah Mwashetani, MP, to move from the Departmental Committee on Lands to the Departmental Committee on Trade, Industry, and Cooperatives. The Honorable Alois Musa Lentoimaga, MP, to move to the Departmental Committee on Trade and Industry and Cooperatives, Trade, Industry and Cooperatives to the Constitutional Implementation Oversight Committee. The Honorable Ayub Savula, MP, to move from the Departmental Committee on Trade, Industry and Cooperatives to the Select Committee on Regional Integration. The Honorable Abdul Kahim, Osman Mohammed, MP, to move from the Departmental Committee on Energy to the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock. The Honorable Rabboni Mamushomba, MP, to move from the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock to the Departmental Committee on Communication, Information and Innovation. The Honorable Kato uh, Olemetito Judah, MP, I hope it's Judah, not Judas, MP, <laughs> to be appointed to the, a member of the Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock. The Honorable David Gikaria, MP, to be appointed a member of the Departmental Committee on Environment and Natural Resources. The Honorable Jaffet Kareke Mbuki, MP, to be appointed a member of the Departmental Committee on Trade, Industry and Cooperatives. The Honorable William Kipkemoy, Kipkemoy Kisang, MP, to be appointed a member of the Departmental Committee on Lands. The Honorable Ali Wario, MP, to be appointed a member of the Departmental Committee on Energy. And the Honorable Johanna Nieno, MP, to be appointed a member of the Select Committee on National Cohesion and Equal Opportunity. <laughs> Looks like there is an agreement that uh, I put the question. I put the question on our members that pursuant the provision of standing order 173 and further to the resolution of this House of 5th December 2017, 15th July 2020, 11th February 2021, 4th May 2021, and 13th October 2021, appointing members into various committees, this House approves the appointment of the members listed as I've read out to the respective committees as specified on the order paper. Will as many as that, op that opinion say aye? Aye. As many of the contrary opinion say nay. The eyes of it. Now, for the convenience of the House, we revert to order number five. Order number five, papers. Leader of majority. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the House today. Uh, Wednesday, February the 9th, 2022, afternoon sitting. It's quite a long list. Uh, number A is the reports of the Auditor General and financial statements in respect to the following institutions for the year ended 30th of June 2021 and the certificates therein. Uh, one, multinational Lake Victoria Maritime Communication and Transportation Project by the Kenya Maritime Authority. The Health Sector Support Project Swap Secretariat, Minister of Health. The Northern Corridor Transport Improvement Project. Northern Urban Transport Improvement Project. Support of the Health Financing Strategy Output-Based Approach Program, Minister of Health. East Africa Public Health 
Laboratory Networking Project, Kenya Medical Supplies Authority, the Green Zones Development Support Project, Phase 2, Kenya Forest Service, Kenya Industry and Entrepreneurship Project, Kenya Health Sector Support Project, Kenya Petroleum Technical Assistance Project by the State Department of Petroleum, the Kenya Off-Grid Solar Access uh, Project for underserved uh, counties, the Ministry of Energy and the SNV Netherlands Development Organization, Intelligent Service Development Fund, uh, the 220KV and 32KV transmission projects, Kenya Electricity Transmission Company Limited, Nairobi Ring Transmission Line Project, Kenya Electricity Transmission Company Limited, Kenya Electricity Expansion Project, Rural Electrification and Renewable Energy uh, Corporation, uh, Kenya Electricity Modernization Project, Rural Electrification and Renewable Energy Corporation, the Kenya Electricity Modernization Project, Ministry of Energy, Last Mile Connectivity Project, Kenya Power and Lighting Company, PLC, the Kenya Off-Grid Solar Access Project for underserved counties, Rural Electrification and Renewable Energy Corporation, Kenya Development of Solar Power Plant in Garissa Project, uh, Rural Electrification and Renewable Energy Corporation, the East Africa Center of Excellence for Skills and Tertiary Education in Biomedical Sciences, Phase 1, Ministry of Health, the Kenya Health Sector Program Support, 3, uh, County Government of Kisi, the Kenya Marine Fisheries and Socioeconomic Development Project, Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives, Kenya Maritime Smart Agriculture Project, the Department for Crop Development and Agricultural Research, uh, Roads 2000, Phase 2, uh, Phase, uh, Kenya Rural Roads Authority, the Kenya Health Sector Support Project, uh, Health Sector Services Fund, Ministry of Health, the Kenya Informal Settlement Improvement Project, uh, State Department of Housing and Urban Development, Upgrading of Kibwezi uh, Mutomo Kitui Road, Kenya National Highways Authority, Support to Road Sector Policy, 10th EDF, uh, Rural Roads Rehabilitation Project, Kenya, Roads, Kenya Rural Roads Authority, EPC, uh, tanky construction of five foot bridges and T Mall flyover in Mombasa and Nangata Roads Project, uh, Kenya National Highways Authority, the Mombasa Gate uh, Bridge Construction Project, Kenya National Highways Authority, Bagamoyo Horohoro Lungalunga Malindi Road Project, Kenya National Highways Authority, the Horn of Africa uh, Gateway Development Project, Kenya National Highways Authority. Kapchorua, Swam, Kitale, and Eldoret Roads Project, Kenya National Highways Authority. The National Urban Transport Improvement uh, Project, Kenya Railways Corporation. The Nairobi Sanitation Output Based Aid Project, uh, Nairobi Water and Sewerage, uh, Sewerage Company Limited. Uh, Kenya Transport Sector Support Project, uh, State Department of Infrastructure. The Global Fund HIV AIDS Program, Minister of Health, and Judicial Performance Improvement Project. The second batch, is the reports of the Auditor General and financial statements in respect to the following institutions for the year ended 30th of June 2019 and the certificates therein. Okame Technical and Vocational College, Kisiwa Technical Training Institute, Secret Technical and Vocational College for the Blind and Deaf, Sangalo Institute of Science and Technology, uh, Northeastern National Polytechnic, Musakasa Technical Training Institute, Kenya Forest Service, Ugenya Technical and Vocational College, Ramogi Institute of Advanced Technology, uh, Mawego Technical Training Institute, uh, Export Promotion Council, the Brand Kenya Board, Kenya Plant Inspectorate Service, and lastly, the Veterinary Medicines Directorate. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Next, by the, a member of the Particular Committee on Finance and Planning, the Honorable Boni Mwalika, member from Boni. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the following paper on the, on the table of, this, of the House. Today, Wednesday afternoon sitting, February 9, 2022. Report on the Departmental Committee on Finance and, Plan and National Planning on the recruitment of the National Assembly nominee to serve in the, in the Equalization Fund and Defensory Board. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The chairperson, National Government uh, Constituencies Development Select Committee, Fund Committee. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the House. Today, Wednesday, February 9, 2022, afternoon sitting. One, a report of the Select Committee on National Government Constitution Development Fund on the status of projects, proposals, approvals, disbursements, and restrictions embossed on constituencies' accounts for the first quarter of 2021-2022 financial year as at 30th September 2021. Two, a report of the Select Committee on National Government Constituency Development Fund on its consideration of the National Government Constituency Development Fund Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 34 of 2021 by the Honorable Tindi Mwale MP. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Next order. O order number six, notices of motion. Honorable Mnini. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I beg to give the notice of the following motion. That this House adopts a report of the Select Committee on National Government Constitution Development Fund on stalled and or incomplete projects initiated through the National Government Constitution Development Fund but falling under the county government functions laid on the table of the House on Tuesday, August 17, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable David Boni Mwalika. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to give notice of the following motion. That taking into consideration the report of the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning on the recruitment of the National Assembly nominee to serve in the Equalization Fund and for the Board, laid on the table of the House on Wednesday 9th, 2022, and password to the provision of Article 204 of the Constitution and Paragraph 41D of the Public Finance Management Equalization Fund Administration Regulation 2021. This House approves the nomination of Mr. Abdullahi Adan Karif for the appointment as the National Assembly nominee to the Equalization Fund and to the Board in accordance with the paragraph 41D of, of the Public Finance Manage, Management Equalization Fund Regulation 2021. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Next order. Order number seven, questions and statements. First question by the Honorable Sosion. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I rise to ask question number 02, stroke 2022. Could the Cabinet Secretary provide, yeah, directed to the Cabinet Secretary of the National Treasury and Planning? One, could the Cabinet Secretary provide a status report regarding payment of pension to Ms. Doris Akumokelo, a beneficiary and next of kin? of the late Ayub Okelo Kitaga, personal number 295264, who served as a teacher under the Teacher Service Commission. Two, when will the said funds be paid to Ms. Doris Okelo, considering that she has provided the necessary documents for processing of the dues in the year 1994? I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Question will be resolved before the Committee on Finance and National Planning. Next question by the member for Magarini, the Honorable Michael Kingi. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I rise to ask number, question number 28 of 2022 to the, to the Cabinet Secretary for Education. One, could the Cabinet Secretary 
provide a status report regarding registration of all public schools and secondary schools in Magarini constituency. Two, what measures has the ministry put in place to ensure that registration of public schools in Magarini constituency is carried out and completed expeditiously? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Question will be replying to before the Committee on Education and Research. Next question is by the Honorable Sankok. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to ask this very emotive question, number 029 of 2022, to the Cabinet Secretary for Lands and Physical Planning. Honorable Speaker, question number one, could the Cabinet Secretary provide the current ownership status of the 98,000 acres of Kedong Ranch in Nakuru, previously hived from Naro County. Two, could the Cabinet Secretary also provide the list of names of directors of the said ranch? Uh, three, could the Cabinet Secretary further provide a detailed report of the said ranch with regard with regard to its acquisition by Kidong Ranch and other private developers from how it was acquired from the Maasai community. Four, could the cabinet secretary explain why the said ranch is guarded by the Kenya Defense Forces, a private land, and mine is private, is not guarded by Kenya Defense Forces. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Maybe the Honorable Sankok might be uh, uh, requiring uh, to get uh, KDF to, <laughs> to guard his. <laughs> the question will be replying to before the Departmental Committee on Lands. Last question is by the member for Kibra, yeah. Honorable Imran Khan, Okoth, sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, I rise to ask question number 30 of 2022. Uh, this question, I brought it last year, Mr. Speaker, but it was never responded to. It, di it is directed to the interior, the Cabinet Secretary for Interior and Coordination of National Government. Number one, could the Cabinet Secretary explain the circumstances surrounding the abduction and subsequent killing of the late Cynthia Makoa, a Form 4 student at Kibra Girls Soccer Academy in Kibra constituency, who was abducted, killed, and dumped into a river in Shianda village, Mumias East sub-county, Kakamega County, while visiting a family during the October 2021 school holidays. Number two, could the Cabinet Secretary explain the status of investigations into the heinous crime and indicate whether any suspects have been questioned or arrested? Three, what steps is the government taking to end the increasing cases of gender-based violence in the country which have seen many, many women and girls injured, maimed, or killed, and ensure justice for the victims. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question will be replying to before the Department of the Committee on Administration and National Security. That is the first segment. The second segment is uh, a request for a statement by the Honorable Dido. It's Honorable Rasso, isn't it? Yeah, Honorable Rasso. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I wish to uh, request for a statement regarding the abduction of Haji Roba Abdul Sereka on 2nd February 2022. Honorable Speaker, pursuant to the provision of a standing order 442C, I rise to request for a statement from the chairman of the Departmental Committee on Administration and National Security on the abduction of Mr. Haji Roba Abdul Sereka on 2nd February 2022 along Popo Road in South Sea Estate in Nairobi. Honorable Speaker, Mr. Sereka is a 58-year-old renowned businessman, a father of five, 
and a resident of Marsabe town, a retired educationist who served in senior positions in the Ministry of Education for 25 years and a philanthropist. Mr. Sereka is a community leader who has built schools, mosques, and helped many less fortunate members of the society. He is currently the chairperson of Marsabe Chamber of Commerce. Honorable Speaker, on 2nd February 2022, at 1100 hours, while on his daily routine, Mr. Sereka was abducted along Popo Road in South Sea Estate by over 10 armed men who sped off in a white Toyota Land Cruiser, registration number KBW 456E, accompanied by two other vehicles, a Subaru and a Toyota Rush. To date, efforts to trace the whereabouts by the family, friends, and members of the community have been futile. Honorable Speaker, Kenya is governed by the rule of law, and the government should protect the lives and property of its citizens. Further, Article 4, 19, 20, and 28 of Constitution of Kenya 2010 provide that every person has inherent dignity and the right to have that dignity respected and protected. Sadly, Mr. Haji Serega has been held in Comunicado from 2nd February 2022 to date, and his abduction has caused a lot of trauma to the family, friends, and community at large. Honorable Speaker, it is against this background that I seek a statement from the chairperson of Departmental Committee on Administration and National Security on the following. One, could the relevant government agencies establish the whereabouts of Haji Roba Sereka and give reasons behind his abduction? What efforts has the government taken to ensure that Mr. Sereka is brought to lawful custody, if necessary, where his family, friends, and the community can access him? And thirdly, what measures has the government put in place to ensure Mr. Sereka is safe and that the culprits are brought to book for their heinous act? I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Now that I don't see the chair of uh, the committee, the question will be channeled to the committee through the office of the majority. Yeah. Yeah, that, that because the, the chair is not, uh, but the matter, the matter is uh, urgent. Next order. Order number 15, the Hate Laws Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill number two of 2021, second reading, resumption of debate. Uh, as when the House arose, uh, the Honorable Milo Diambo was on the floor. You have a balance of four minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker had indicated when I started speaking that I support the Health Law Amendment Bill. Uh, but I'll be supporting it with proposed amendments by the committee. Mr. Speaker had indicated some of the reasons why I was supporting the bill. Uh, that Speaker, it is, uh, the, what this bill seeks to do is to amend 17 pieces of legislation uh, relating to the health sector. And Mr. Speaker, those include the Pharmacy and Poisons Act, Mental Health Act, Medical Practitioners and Dentists Act, Nurses Act, Kenya Medical Training College Act, National Hospital Insurance Fund Act, the Medical Laboratory Technician and Technology Act, Tobacco Control Act, Nutritionists and Dietitians Act, Cancer Prevention and Control Act, the Public Health Officers Training, Registration and Licensing, Kenya Medical Supplies Authority, Counselors and Psychologists Act, Physiotherapists Act, Health Records and Information Managers Act, the Clinical Officers Training Registration and Licensing Act, and the Health Act. Mr. Speaker, what the bill seeks to do is to have wide-ranging amendments 
on these bills relating to health policy to improve efficiency, service delivery, realization of the universal <coughs> health coverage, and the Big Four agenda in um, line with the Constitution, the Health Act, and the Mongozo Code of Conduct uh, for a, a Code of Governance for State Corporations. Mr. Speaker, having said that, I just wanted to say that some of the things that stand out for me that I have seen in the report of the committee, which I think need to be uh, looked into, is that um, we are reversing back into the old ways, uh, Mr. Speaker, because it is top heavy. There's heavy representation in the state corporations that are being set with where you have PSS forming almost 70%. PSS and AGs in all these corporations that have been set forming 70%. Some of the agencies that were there before, like civil society, faith-based organizations and all that have been removed. And Mr. Speaker, that then takes away uh, the voice of the public, which the Constitution uh, requires. Mr. Speaker, it also takes away some element of self-regulation within those sectors. Uh, third thing, Mr. Speaker, um, the other issue uh, that is con of concern to me is, Mr. Speaker, sometimes we need to ask what comes before, uh, the chicken or the egg. In relation to Mo the Mongoso Code of Governance, uh, Mr. Speaker, I can't really remember, maybe it did come to the House for it to be a government policy, but sometimes when you see the government not adhering even to constitutional standards, we keep referring to the Mongozo Code of, 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 of Governance as though it is the Constitution. I think there are certain constitutional principles that go ahead uh, are way more important than uh, you know, a government policy. I don't think the Mongozo Code of Governance in itself is bad, but it must adhere to certain constitutional uh, standards, which includes uh, inclusion of the civil, uh, civil society, uh, gender inclusion and inclusion of disability and regional balance, some of which are included. Uh, Mr. Speaker, one of the issues of concern to me is the NHIF bill, if you see, because I see my time is up, if you see the provisions relating to NHIF bill. Mr. Speaker, I think we dealt with some of these issues six, less than six months ago, so I don't even know why they are even here. It creates a lot of confusion. And Mr. Speaker, at some time, we'll be calling on your offices. If you could request, uh, indulge me just one minute to say this. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. If you could guide us, for instance, when you have an omnibus bill with 17 pieces of legislation, when we call for public participation, should it be public participation in health laws amendment, which can confuse the public as a health act amendment, or should we, in the media, uh, yeah, you, get, uh, you, you have your, your one minute, Honorable Mili. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I was just wondering if then we can take the, in uh, calling for public participation, whether then we can put the 17 pieces of legislation, Mr. Speaker, because you can find that there's one person who is not interested in the pharmacy stack, but is interested in NHIF. But when they see the health, health laws, it confuses, because a lot of people think we are actually amending the Health Act, for which they may not be interested. The nurses may not be interested in the amendment of the Health Act, but they may be interested in the amendment of the Nursing Act. So I'm just saying going forward, perhaps when we are amending, even when it's omnibus, we need to very specifically provide for that. Otherwise, it may stand to be challenged in court. Thank you, and I really um, I do thank you for indulging me. Thank you. Uh, and I support with amendments. I think, I think uh, one, one key amendment, Honorable Mili, should be one that addresses the issue of a decision that the House has taken in the last six months. Because I think there, there, there were very substantial you know, you know, amendments which are into the NHIF uh, law, which was just ascended to in December, towards the end of December, actually. So for it to be here again, they, maybe somebody needs to really look through and see whether you may not be repeating or maybe doing away with that, that which you just passed the other, the, the other day, even though it was a different session. Yeah. Um, Honorable Ende Vignense. Mm, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I do not wish to contribute to this. Thank okay. you. I'm just following uh, 
uh, the requests. Honorable Mwangi Mburu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, but I also didn't uh, intend to contribute to this. Oh. Honorable Nikal. Um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support this bill, but with a lot of reluctance. I must bring that out at this point. Mr. Speaker, the object of the bill is to actually to harmonize the health laws and to be in line with the Mwangoso Code of Governance, and, and those are really the, 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 the main issues. But Mr. Speaker, there are very many issues that have been raised, and the only reason I'm actually supporting with reluctance is that the committee has sat down and has proposed very many amendments. And if those amendments pass, then I will be happy with this. But should those amendments not pass, I will definitely, even at that stage, not support this bill. Mr. Speaker, this bill amends 17 laws. 12 of them are regulatory acts that are regulating the training, the conduct uh, of, of, of health professionals. Two acts are regulating service provision, KEMSA and NHIF. One act is regulating uh, training institutions. So the other act is regulating drugs and substance of, of addiction. And one is an overarching act. Mr. Speaker, an omnibus covering so many laws with so many various uh, objectives is unlikely. Mr. Speaker, an omnibus, uh, omnibus bill that is covering so many laws that are looking at very different functions is, uh, is likely to cause confusion. And that's why we actually, the committee, had to come in and do uh, very many amendments. Because of that, it ignored very basic principles. One, the principle of representation. We are all aware that when we are dealing with regulatory bodies or professionals, representation is important. Even in service delivery like NHIF and KEMSA, representation is very, very important. Now, with self-regulation is particularly important when you are dealing with professional bodies. Now, this bill, as, was as, as is now, is actually overpopulated with government officers. PSS, uh, the Attorney General, and therefore denying the stakeholders the chance to actually participate. Mr. Speaker, the same bill is saying it is adhering strictly to Mungoso Code. Mr. Speaker, I'm really craving your attention. There's answered, okay. Mr. Speaker, we would want to know whether this Mungoso Code of Governance actually is an instrument that can guide or actually change what Parliament has done on that basis alone. If you look, for example, when you are looking at representation in NHIF, very important institutions like the teachers, the, 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 the service providers were actually left out. So very important stakeholders were left out. Like if you look at NHIF, uh, organizations like KOTU, organizations like NAT were actually left out. Uh, when you looked at regulatory bodies like the Nursing Council, the Kenya Medical Association, you find that actually there were very few uh, professionals in there and you had government officers in their place. So Mr. Speaker, 
to that extent, this bill, as if it passes as it is, it will actually be a disaster for professional regulation and even for stakeholder participation on all the laws that are affected. However, when this bill came here and the issue of public participation arose, a lot, we looked at it, the committee looked at it, and Mr. Speaker, the committee has made massive uh, amendments. And I wonder, another principle that I may be guided in, how much amendments can be made on a bill until and still the bill represents the original objective? That has bothered me. But to the extent that the amendments actually uh, took care of the concern of the stakeholders, the committees then agreed we'll take those amendments. So it is on that basis, Mr. Speaker, that I will support this bill. And I will appeal to the mover, he's not listening to me, I will appeal to the mover that when these amendments come to the committee of the whole house, we actually ensure, and I will ask our colleagues in the house that we really take keen attention on these amendments because if we take it the way we all take the committee of the whole house, a couple of us sitting here and saying aye and nay, we actually may be a disaster for the country. But having had some consultations, having had some assurance that the committee amendments will carry the day, I support the bill with that reservation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Funula. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for granting me opportunity to also drop a word in respect of the Health Laws Amendment Bill 2021, Bill Number 8, whichever, Bill Number 2. Honorable Speaker, for all the time I have been here, and our, term, our first time is coming to an end, I've always been uncomfortable with the omnibus bills that tend to amend so many bills in one particular bill, attempts attempt to amend very many acts of parliament in one particular bill. You rob the people of Kenya the opportunity to constructively contribute to the contents of the bill. You rob the people of Kenya and parliament the ability to deeply scrutinize the bill in order to enrich for the purposes of benefiting the people of Kenya. Honorable Speaker, as my colleagues have said, the bill seeks to amend 17 acts related to the Health Act, health sector, and other related issues. Honorable Speaker, there are two major issues that come out of this amendment. Number one, the act seems the bill proposes to reconstitute the various boards, councils that are in various acts of parliament. And these are the Pharmacy and Poisons Act, the Medical Practitioner Dentist Act, the Nurses Act, the Medical Laboratory Technician Technologists Act, the Tobacco Control Board, the Cancer Prevention and Control Act, Public Health Officers Training Registration and Licensing Act, number 12, 2013, the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority, the Counselors and Psychologists Act, the Physiotherapist Act, the Clinical Officers Act, and the Main Health Act, and many numerous acts of parliament. Honorable Speaker, whatever, what comes out very clear is that we are reversing the gains we have made in terms of professionalizing professional bodies. But the mere fact that most of the people who sit, who sit in the boards and the councils are government officers, senior government officers, and then the chairman is appointed by the president. Essentially, the team or the board or the council will essentially be controlled by the government completely. And they can take any decisions at the exclusion of other members. General Honorable Speaker, the world is going towards self-regulation. Most professions are going towards self-regulation. And I would urge the committee, and we will move the amendments at the committee of the whole house, to literally water down the top heavy government representation to reflect the intent and purpose of 
self-regulation or regulating the training, registration, and generally managing the affairs of the profession. Honorable Speaker, again, looking at even the process of appointment, Honorable Speaker, it would seem the idea is that the board will outsource resource, that's the word we're using, resource or look for competent people. Yet the Constitution of Kenya contemplates that each and every Kenyan must be given an equal opportunity to compete for any available vacants in public service. Honorable Speaker, the idea and the main purpose should be competitive recruitment that essentially gives each, every, each and every Kenyan a chance to be appointed. And many, co and many court cases have actually led to that particular idea that you cannot purport to appoint members of the board, members of the council, through direct appointment without before going through competitive recruitment. So therefore, we will make an amendment to ensure that any appointment, whether to any council or anywhere or any board, is done competitively through the press of advertisement. Honorable Speaker, the other particular issue that seems to come out very clearly is the issue of the quorum. Again, following the top heavy, with the quorum set, a few people, government appointed, can actually sit and make monumental decisions affecting a profession without involving the key people who are involved in the profession. So those are some of the amendments we'll make. Honorable Speaker, the second set of amendments that have attracted my attention in this particular bill is the issue to do with the NHIF. And as my colleagues have mentioned, we just dealt with a bill to do with the NHIF sometimes last year in October. And I remember we went through the winnowing process, we made some amendments, they went through, and indeed, it is good that we moved forward. Honorable Speaker, again, more or less the amendments being proposed tend towards that particular area. And that's the in respect to universal health coverage scheme. We note, the, the key management board of the NHIF now changes to National Hospital Insurance Fund Board of Management. I really do not see the difference with any other term, but probably that should be able to bring it to line with whatever they call Mongozo. But honest, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, there are two issues that come out that we need a, a sober and a serious discussion. On the issue of those members of the society, the injured and the vulnerable that are supposed to benefit from government subsidy. Mm -hmm. The idea of universal health care is to get everybody a medical mm -hmm. uh, care. Honorable Speaker, we have had challenges in identifying members for the safety net program. We have had challenges of identifying members for cash transfer. For example, in my constituency, the run down to 2017 election they only selected those members mm. they know they were supporting Jubilee. Mm. And they left out all other, other members who are not known to be supporting Jubilee. It was like a carrot and a stick dangled before them. You go and vote, then we enlist you into the program. Especially in the second, in the rerun, in the, rerun the election rerun. Leaving the same program to the same people we are going to have another continuous problem of complaints all along. And that's why in the previous amendment that I had proposed an amendment that was rejected was to have a system whereby there's a consultative process at the constituency level that can identify who are the vulnerable people who are unable to pay for themselves NHIF so that they get this subsidy. I will make a second attempt to make those amendments and I hope my colleagues and the committee will you see the essence why it is important that we get other people to be involved in the identification of those people who require support and those who do not require support. Honorable Speaker, when you look at the bill, it has got a, a proposal to amend the NHIF Act by a cl new clause 22D, a specific section, a, a subsection 3, mm -hmm. that talks about regulations and rules. It purports to say the board in consultation with the cabinet secretary, shall make rules and regulations. Honorable Speaker, as all of us are aware, rules, regulations could actually fall in a, a, a subsidiary legislation that is covered under the Statutory Instrument Act. And the Statutory Instrument Act is very clear. The regulatory making authority 
is a cabinet secretary. So this is an amendment that we must make to align this amendment in line with statutory instrument act so that we do not see cases where we seem to be so confused. Honorable Speaker, as I conclude, you, health is such an important matter. And many places, Honorable Speaker, in many counties, noting that health is a devolved function, in many counties, if there is any area that seems to be made problematic and is causing a lot of grief to many residents, is health services. Honorable Speaker, I do not know where the angel will come from so that he can, he can bring the whole spirit to the new set of governors that will be appointed to prioritize health care. If there is any aspect that devastates a family, however rich it is, is the issue of the medical bill. If there is anything that can destroy a family, it's long-term medical costs that are unable to bear. I hope and pray that those of the, the Kenyan people, when you go to the next election, the most important criteria is to listen to those who are aspiring to be governors. Do they talk about health? Do they prioritize health? Do they, do they present workable solutions to the health crisis that we have in this country? We lose people to very many preventable diseases that we could have easily sorted out at an early stage. With those few remarks, Honorable Speaker, I support, but with that, I'll bring some amendments. Thank you. Honorable Russell. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I wish to comment on this omnibus uh, bill of health law amendment uh, bill number two. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, eventually I think you are likely to be the gatekeeper, the depository of knowledge in this house. Uh, as I look around the house, this is a very important bill. This bill is about this country. It is about the health of uh, this nation. It proposes certain fundamental changes to the existing acts uh, within uh, the health laws that have been enacted by this house. The absence of the chair and the absence of key members of the health committee is telling. But having said that, the purpose of legislation is to enhance governance, in effectiveness and efficiency in performance of functions and duties to both institutions and individuals. This House, as it enacts laws or as it amends the old laws, must take into consideration that what is the object of doing this. When we have the omnibus bill, I think largely the omnibus is intended to bring about correction, not fundamental changes to existing acts and existing laws that superintendents institution. Honorable Speaker, having looked at uh, this amendment that has been suggested, I see an attempt to inject bureaucracy to control as opposed to injecting professionalism that would to an extent add value in the way we are able to control the health institution. And I think as government, the purpose of government is to provide service and also to inject uh, resources and at the same time to make sure that those resources are used uh, purposefully. Honorable Speaker, professional bodies, as those that have been indicated, 
uh, in this omnibus uh, bill are legal bodies constitutional, constituted by most qualified individuals. And that is how important it is that as we bring uh, this bill before the House, we must look at how much public participation has taken place. And what do we mean by public participation in this particular omnibus bill is the public that is the, is the involves the consumers, but also stakeholders who are the main player or players in the health arena. And that is why uh, my colleagues who have uh, spoken before me were very clear that NHIF, where we enacted such an important bill, I think hardly a month ago, then suddenly we have an, om an omnibus amendment that is uh, suggesting a particular change. I'm not uh, sure if uh, those who have moved the amendment have looked at the extant bill, which was just recently signed into an act of parliament. Honorable Speaker, as bills come before the committees of the National Assembly, the committees will scrutinize. And I have to say with degree of certainty that if there are major changes or the committee proposes rafts of amendment to what has been brought before the House, then I believe maybe that bill was not properly crafted from the beginning. And that is where we must be careful to actually ask ourselves, would it not be necessary to even return to the originators of the bill so that they look through it as opposed to the committee appearing to be making the bill themselves. Honorable Speaker, at this point in time, in the life of the 12th Parliament, there are certain laws that can easily be enacted without participation of most of us. These particular laws, if they sneak through the house, in the long run, they will have far-reaching ramification on institutions and on the way those particular laws can be objectively implemented. And the implementers might find it very difficult in the end, blaming the National Assembly uh, for crafting or for coming up with bad laws that are difficult to implement. For this and other reasons, I would also urge uh, the leader of the majority, who I really congratulate because he actually has now become a permanent feature in this house, as even the committee uh, chairs have taken flight, so that certain laws we rather take a longer time for them to be enacted as opposed to rushing them through the house. With those remarks, uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, I thank you and I beg to support. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Now, Honorable Members, there's, um, I don't see any further interest, so I call upon um, the mover to reply. Leader Majority. Yes, thank you, Honorable Speaker. 
Honorable Speaker, debate on this motion began uh, on this bill uh, started yesterday, and uh, I'm grateful to the members who have found uh, time to uh, contribute to it. Uh, but uh, like I said uh, in my moving yesterday, this bill was introduced at the beginning of last year. And uh, because of the extensive consultation it had to go through as issues were raised on it, uh, it's perhaps the most uh, publicly participated bill uh, that we are, we are looking at. So I want to assure members that in terms of public participation, this bill has received extensive public participation and uh, input from committee members and members specifically uh, those in the medical profession. Um, and if you look at the committee report, members will actually notice that uh, there's a whole raft of amendments which Honorable uh, Dr. Nikau did mention about and Honorable Miri Odiambo mentioned about. And if those are implemented, then even the reservations that members have on the bill would have been sorted. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I did also mention uh, yesterday in my moving that inclusion of the NHIF in that original bill uh, was again a timing issue. This bill had been done even before we brought in the NHIF bill uh, and had anticipated to, to do some of the things that we eventually did in, uh, and carried in the National uh, Health Insurance Fund bill. Hence, any references to the NHIF now will actually be uh, sorted out at the Committee of the Whole House through an amendment to remove them because they've already been incorporated in the act that has been signed. So I dedicated that yesterday, uh, and I think we'll continue uh, from the same basis. Uh, and again, it's the same thing in terms of the issues of top heavy, uh, the representation. This is one of the issues that had brought problem and uh, cost uh, a lot of the, uh, the regulatory agencies to, uh, to appeal to members for, for interventions. Uh, because we also agree uh, you can't have all lots of government within the 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 regulatory uh, the two of regulatory bodies being covered by by the act but by and large uh, i think it's a uh, it's a very good bill especially with the amendments that will uh, have gone through the health committee at different stages and uh, i look forward to members participating uh, as uh, the honorable Borasso has said uh, when we come to the committee of the whole house so that we can ensure that we amend this bill to accord with the wishes of the house. Uh, Honorable Speaker, with those uh, uh, remarks, uh, once again thank the members who participated and uh, look forward to their uh, uh, further participation during the committee of the whole house. I beg to reply. Very well, honourable members, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, we defer putting of the question to tomorrow afternoon. Uh, next order. Order number 16, the coffee bill, Senate bill number 22 of 2020, second reading. I don't see the chairperson of the committee. Yeah, Honorable Speaker, uh, the chairperson of the committee has uh, kindly requested that we step down this bill because they are still in consultation with his committee members and uh, some of the other stakeholders. And uh, we will now uh, bring the report on in the course of next week. Because we don't have the report and it's uh, you know, we're using the Senate bill also to link and harmonize with the bill that we introduced in this house. So they're in a, at the final stage of harmonizing the two. And they would wish to, to bring a, a full report rather than a progress report in the course of next week. So I would ask that we agree to his request to step it down for now. Would you, would you, would you 
suggest that we be put in the order paper next week or I, maybe the week after? I think next week we had agreed we do budget issues. So yeah. realistically, it might be best we do it the week after. The week after, yeah. Very well. So therefore, st uh, stood down. We move to the next order. Order number 17, the Circle Societies Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill number 55 of 2021, second reading. Yes, uh, Leader of Majority. Yeah. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that the Circle Societies Amendment Bill, uh, being National Assembly Bill number 55 of 2021, uh, be now read a uh, second time. Uh, and, and Honorable Speaker, as uh, members will be aware, uh, this bill is a this kind of republication of the Circle Society's Amendment Bill number 16 of 2018, which had already gone through this house, uh, and uh, it, uh, it was passed at the end of 2018 and assented to, but uh, following the case that was uh, sent to the court by the Senate, uh, the High Court uh, on 29th of October 2020 did uh, declare, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, that uh, give a, a position uh, in the Constitutional Petition Number 353 of 2019 that uh, um, nullified 23 uh, bills. Um, and one of these uh, is, is actually the Act Number 18 of 2018, the Circle Societies. However, as uh, the Court of Appeal did reverse uh, were uh, upheld, including this one. You know, the decision to nullify was upheld, including this one, the Circle Societies, on the understanding that uh, it had not gone to, to the Senate. So the decision that we then took from house business and uh, following uh, uh, guidance from chair uh, was we republished this bill, uh, which has already gone through public participation. It has been completed in this house for purposes of then forwarding it to the Senate so that the bit that the courts were uncomfortable with that it had not gone to the Senate uh, will now be completed and then we can have it, uh, uh, if they concur with everything, we can then have it re-assented to and it becomes the law. So really we don't have to, it's so clear to everyone what the content of this bill was. It was thoroughly debated in this house. Uh, public participation was done and the members uh, unanimously agreed to it. and. Uh, Hence, um, we, uh, apart from just highlighting what this bill intends to do, um, uh, basically it's something for just to refresh our minds, um, that it's, this bill is uh, uh, providing for the establishment and uh, operationalization of an electronic uh, filing system uh, for all the statutory returns and documents by the SACO societies. And it also makes a provision for the issuance and publication of specific guidelines and directions on how the electronic processes are supposed to be, to be realized. And generally in uh, uh, looking at the issues that uh, more specifically, the bill seeks to, uh, you know, act on the following, modernize the system of circles in Kenya, as well as the, some of the processes uh, that it's uh, talking to is the registration of circles through introduction, again, of an electronic filing system, uh, issuance and cancellation of the authentication codes to the registered users. Uh, it also looks at the process of transmission of statutory returns, documents, and other relevant information, uh, correction of errors, if any, or amendments to statutory returns, documents, and other information, and uh, remedy uh, procedures in case of breakdown of the electronic system, amongst other things. So basically, again, this is, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, just seeking uh, that and, like I said, I debated and agreed. Um, 
proposes to alter the Circles uh, Societies Act of uh, number 14 of 20, 2008 uh, by amending section 53, uh, which is to allow for the use of ICT in the collection and receipt of statutory instruments. Um, and uh, in clause nine, uh, further states that the authority may establish and administer an electronic uh, filing system to electronically submit statutory returns and documents. And, and this is the thrust of the amendments that were being proposed and being made. Um, now, you know, this bill uh, or the provision of this bill will reduce the regulatory reporting burden on SACOS uh, or also uh, assuring faster, more efficient and accurate uh, reporting uh, both and also the monitoring and analysis of the financial conditions of the SACOS as well as the, uh, you know, introducing this uh, so-called risk-based uh, supervision on, on the SACO societies. So the bill also uh, intends to harmonize the definition of minister, um, you know, to bring into uh, accord with the constitution, the reference now being to cabinet secretary, and also the responsibility of the office of the controller general as expressed in the act to also harmonize it with the constitution. It is a straightforward matter, uh, honorable speaker. Uh, like I said, we had gone through this bill, everything passed, it was challenged in the courts, that it had not been, because SACO uh, cooperatives are one part of the devolved functions, and the High Court did agree that indeed on, on this particular uh, bill, uh, we should have taken it to the Senate for their input. And uh, hence, we hope uh, by redoing it afresh and uh, passing it, then we take it to the Senate, it will have completed the journey as required by law. So, Honorable Speaker, with those uh, few remarks, I beg to move and would ask the Honorable uh, Nduati Gugi uh, to second, uh, who has been putting quite a bit of time on this and a member of the Finance Committee. I'm also aware the Honorable Udo is here and uh, he will be giving his input into it. Uh, but uh, I beg to move. Okay, Honorable Nduati. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. As the uh, Majority Leader has said, this bill had come through our committee, Trade, uh, Industry and Cooperatives Committee, and it did justice to it. Uh, it went through public participation also. It came here for first reading, second reading, and it passed uh, in the Committee of the whole House. So it underwent all the stages, and we had taken care, and uh, the Circle Societies also participated, and they are really supporting uh, this bill. So, Madam Speaker, I wish you a second. Honorable members, I propose the question, which is that the Circle Societies Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 55 of 2021, be now read a second time. Honorable Member for Funula. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to contribute to this bill. <clears throat> as the leader of majority has said, and as my colleague in the Committee of Trade Industry and Cooperatives has said, we had actually discussed and dispensed of this bill, both at the Committee of Trade Industry and Cooperative, as well as the floor of this house, and we had passed with the amendments that had been moved by various members. But obviously, Honorable Speaker, following the litigious nature of our, our sibling who is idle instead of uh, dealing with devolved issues, they want to get involved in very mundane issues. It has come back to this floor for purposes of complying with the court ruling under the court appeal case. Honorable Speaker, the bill, essentially the trust of the bill is to provide for electronic filing of returns. And this is in line with the ongoing digitalization of government services. As it has been the practice in the past, Honorable Speaker, any SACO, any cooperative society, or any SACO that is required to file returns was required to carry hard copies and bring to relevant offices. 
The purpose of the electronic filing system, Honorable Speaker, is to ease the burden of paperwork, to ease the burden of travel, and to ease the burden related to wrong filing. It's therefore expected, Honorable Speaker, the electronic filing system will ensure risk-based supervision of cooperative societies and circles, and will allow for timely intervention in the event there is any mismanagement or unprofessional issues at the circle. Honorable Speaker, it's also important that this gives ASRA, which is the supervision authority or the regulatory authority, a chance to review online and real time any matters relating to circles and societies. Honorable Speaker, in supporting this amendment, Honorable Speaker, we need to emphasize the important role of the cooperative movement in this country. We need to emphasize the important role, Honorable Speaker, of the circle to the extent they raise funds and the members use that fund to address various issues and challenges in their personal life. So, Honorable Speaker, with those few remarks, I support the bill because I already made comments on it. There's nothing more we are adding, and I urge my, my colleagues to pass it so that to transmit to Senate so that they can finalize the matter and give SASRA the opportunity to supervise and manage circles adequately and efficiently. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. is interested in making a contribution. It's an important, uh, it's an important bill. If, if there be no further interest, I'll call upon the mover to reply. Yeah, Honorable Speaker, I want to thank the, my, the seconder and uh, the member who has contributed. Uh, and it's understandable uh, the fact that members had already exhausted debate on this and we are only doing it for technical purposes uh, to help complete what should uh, had not been completed. I would uh, uh, understand why the reduced interest in uh, contribution. But uh, nonetheless, um, I want to thank the members for being here and uh, having contributed, and I beg to reply. Uh, we shall defer the putting of the question until we have it next in the order paper. We can move to the next order. Order number 18, motion, official documenting of the history of the National Assembly. Leader of Majority. Uh, Honourable uh, Honourable Speaker, I beg to move uh, the following uh, motion: that aware that the House, the history of any institution, is key to evaluating its development, uh, further aware that documenting history provides a knowledge bank for future generations, uh, noting that the history of Parliament of Kenya is largely unrecorded, scattered, and piecemeal. Further noting that most comparable jurisdictions have elaborate records of their history, which are periodically updated to capture new developments, cognizant of the fact that the Parliament of Kenya marks its 115th anniversary this year, having been established as the Legislative Council, or LegCo, in August of 1907, further cognizant that the legislature has been transforming in the last century both in mandate and composition, starting as a few unicameral legislature to a bicameral one at independence, to a unicameral legislature before again reverting to a bicameral uh, parliament after the promulgation of the Constitution of Kenya 2010, uh, recognizing the many works of arts, including statutes, frescoes, uh, murals, and pictures connected with the history of the Parliament of Kenya, including the contributions of great men and women, families, architects, and politicians throughout the 114 years of the history of the institution, 
and its transformation and growth throughout the period. Now, therefore, uh, in order to ensure the preservation of the history of the institution for future generations, this House resolves, one, that at, at an appropriate stage, the House appoints a committee comprising of not more than nine members to oversee the preservation of these histories for posterity with special focus on the National Assembly. Now, two, that the copyrights of the History of Parliament of Kenya projects be reserved for the benefit of Parliament and the people of Kenya. And three, that the clerk of the National Assembly puts in place and executes appropriate mechanisms to actualize this resolution. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, we had started debate on this motion in the last session, and obviously that died with the fifth uh, session. So it's a reintroduction of uh, that intention uh, in the realization that our parliament has come a long way. And uh, for those who have read some history, the first legislative council, the Ledge Corps, uh, sat in a small corrugated iron building in Haleslasi Avenue, uh, which was then known as White House uh, Road, uh, just across from these chambers, and it met there for 17 years. Um, we also know the Bank of India uh, building in Kenyatta Avenue. It has its own history, and uh, the Ledge Corps uh, started meeting from there in 1924. Uh, it was then referred to, uh, known as the Memorial Hall. And uh, from that building, between 1924 to 1954, uh, the Ledge Corps transacted business for that year, and again before it moved to the buildings that we know today, which is the Parliament. Now, uh, this information is uh, recorded by the first speaker of the National Assembly, uh, the late Humphrey uh, Slade, who served this parliament from 1967 to 1970 and at uh, pages 59 to 60 uh, in his book, The Parliament of Kenya. And uh, this book was published in 1967 uh, <laughs> by the East Africa Publishing uh, House. And uh, at that time, the book used to cost three shillings. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually a very rare book uh, for those who might be lucky to, to get it. Uh, um, and I'm, I'm recounting these details just to demonstrate a few things. That one, we have a very rich history, uh, but uh, one that we hardly know of which is largely unrecorded, and where it is recorded, it is scattered. Um, the two, it's important we have a repository of our unique history and heritage that we can always go back to and read, touch, feel, and, uh, and be part of. And especially uh, with the young generation who are now more moving towards the, their phones and, uh, and playstations and all that, in the near future, we probably will never have anyone who can tell you uh, what happens in parliament, what happened in parliament, where uh, this tradition that we keep talking of, that parliament is about its history, its uh, traditions and uh, pronouncement. We could lose all that if we actually don't get into this uh, documentation. And the third reason I'm recounting these details is as Chinua Achembe, uh, the world acclaimed Nigerian novelist uh, and essayist once said, uh, that there's that great proverb that until the lions have their own historians, the history of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. And we therefore need to tell our history. And we've seen the distortion that has happened to our own history of Kenya uh, depending on who tells that story. Uh, if you're reading from the colonial books, uh, you'll find uh, that uh, much as the mountains have been there, Mount Kenya has always been there with its own different names. Uh, it's in the books we are told 
the first man to see Mount Kenya was a certain uh, colonialist. Eh? The first person to discover uh, Nyahuru Falls <laughs> was uh, uh, somebody Thompson. But uh, it has always been there. But because the locals had never documented it and actually come to, 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 to claim it and uh, uh, get him in Lake Victoria, being named at, uh, you know, uh, Queens, it's, we, we, we risk that even the Parliament of Kenya, some people may not even know, uh, you know, some of these things and it could be written in history from a different perspective. So it gives me then great pleasure too that uh, as I move this motion, um, and also to note that other parliaments have been doing the same in terms of their documentation. If you look at our um, UK uh, counterpart, the parliament in the United Kingdom, they have what they call the preservation and access team, uh, which basically ensures that previous, uh, all the precious uh, collections are cared for, conserved, and prepared for digitization alone. And the Information and Records Management Service, uh, which goes by the acronym IRMS, supports the management and protection of parliamentary information. Indeed, because of this documentation, the Westminster uh, and its traditions becomes part of the United Kingdom tourism and attracts quite a number of visitors who come because they've read, they know about those traditions, and even the, 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 the procession the speaker's procession yeah, is one of the things that people queue uh, to wait for the speaker's procession so they can record it, they can do it because of the significance it's been accorded. And, uh, uh, but all this is because once it's documented, people can know about it in other jurisdictions and get to, uh, to, to get it. Honorable Speaker, when you go to the US, in the, the Congress as what they call the Center for Legislative Archives, and this is where you'll find all the historical records of the House of Rep, as well as the Senate. Um, New Zealand has a historical bills, which are again accessible online, and they have a massive collection as far back as 1854. And um, these are just examples, uh, just to buttress the point that this is the path that others have trodden uh, with the success. And, uh, there's no reason why the Parliament of Kenya cannot uh, do the same. Um, we also know we will not be starting from zero. We made some uh, progress, we made some strides, and uh, we have the parliamentary broadcasting unit and the live streaming of uh, parliamentary proceeding, which already has archived uh, a fair bit of what's been happening. We have our social media huddles and the website that contains uh, thousands of photographs of this house in action, uh, whether in committees or in chamber, and uh, or when uh, uh, the Honorable Speaker is meeting with visiting dignitaries. And uh, if we also know that uh, Honorable Speaker, and I know you, you will know this because we sit together in liaison committee, We've been having this annual showcasing of the work of committees of parliament, which has all been documented in bits. So at least there's somewhere to start. But it's all scattered. And uh, uh, I'm not sure how much we'll get if we went to our library uh, in terms of you know, some of the contributions or how easy it is to actually get what did TJ uh, say on a certain day. Uh, uh, I'm sure he would want his uh, generations to come uh, to be quoting him uh, <laughs> and to even say when, uh, you know, even some of the drama we've had in this house, uh, for whatever reason, it, it will be important to see uh, that all that being recorded. Um, I'm also aware that if you are to search our website, uh, that's Parliament website, you will access a fact sheet on the history of Parliament. And uh, again, this is a small publication but it's a great start. Um, and I'm told that we have about 30 such publications. Again, we've scattered uh, uh, depending on who's written it and what perspective. 
Uh, I also know one of the former uh, clerks, uh, Mr. Gishohi, did write something about parliament. Um, and I'm sure there'll be several others who might help, uh, in, in fact, from either memory or direct to, to help in documenting this. So uh, the long and short of it is, uh, honorable speaker, is uh, after 115 years, if we don't uh, document what we have, we, we're likely to lose it, we're likely to uh, confuse future generations, and uh, we will not be doing justice to the history of this nation and the history uh, of this parliament. Um, I also, uh, I, I've mentioned the two documentaries that were produced by this house in terms of the interviews by committee chairs. Um, and also, there was another documentary that was done recently. Um, members may have uh, seen it or not. Uh, under the title of A House Defying COVID-19 documentary, documentary. And uh, whereas these are not the only ones, at least it shows we, this house has operated in different circumstances. We've had night sessions, we've had, you know, all those things. And uh, they all have been to respond to the different circumstances uh, they, that have challenged how we, we do business. And if we don't document them, those who come after us may not even know why we did things the way we did. Um, and hence, I, I, I'm only saying it's, it's important we document, document, document. Um, Honorable Speaker, therefore, what gives me uh, great hope uh, about this motion is that all that we do here will be conserved. And again, systemized so that this generation and the future generations will access them and get to know what we are doing here, why we are doing it, why we are doing it the way we are doing it, and uh, what others did before, why we change things, uh, at what point we change our studying orders, and for what reason. Uh, the Honorable Speaker was just talking today about not wanting to chair the Privileges Committee. We will get to know why it has happened. Um, some of those major decisions that have been made by uh, those uh, committees uh, which will guide future members. And even as we move from the 12th to the 13th parliament, with our transition rates of 70% plus, uh, it becomes very easy as part of the, uh, in, whatever, the induction for the new members when we have this documentation. So, Honorable Speaker, I believe this will be a gift to ourselves and to future generations. And I beg to move and ask the Honorable Njidi uh, Anduati Ngugi, MP for Katanga, to second. Honorable Anduati. Honorable Gikaria is... Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Honorable Gikaria. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I think you have done this country proud as a former chairman of Energy Committee. And you made your contribution, which you also need to document. You should be fighting for documentation of your achievement. Uh, and you have done your part. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I really want to support uh, what the majority leader has said and uh, say that it should come much earlier. Honorable Speaker, I had never come to this parliament before, before I was elected in 20, 2017. And when I came here, I really wanted to study the history of this parliament. Honorable Speaker, there was nothing. When you walk along the corridors of this parliament as you enter here, you might think the only people who have made contributions to this parliament are the former speakers, because that is what you see on display. And I know there are members who have really done much for this house. Majority leader used to be a finance minister for a very long time in this country, and he did, uh, he did very well. Such a contribution should be available for our, for our people. Honorable Speaker, as a parliament, uh, I want to say we have failed. And there is a good example. If you go to judiciary, they have a judiciary museum. In fact, it's a good place where there's a lot of knowledge to be learned. In fact, you, you might even want to spend more than three days just learning the history of judiciary. 
very well displayed. Uh, judges of people who have been judges of the High Court uh, and other judiciary officials. So, as a house, as one of one of government, we should borrow from judiciary and we document, we document uh, uh, our past. Honorable Speaker, uh, we are doing a new building here. I, I think, uh, as part of what we want to do. Uh, on this side, we should be able to have our own museum where we can display our achievements. Honorable Speaker, you have done very well as one of the members of the Speaker's panel. We should be able to read your contribution. As uh, you go out to contest as a governor, what you did here, uh, your kids, my kids, should also be able to follow. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, uh, there are many bills which have been passed here. And uh, we can make a mistake because we don't, we don't have a, a good record. Honorable Speaker, as we also document uh, the achievement of members, we also need to list down the bills which have been passed here and maybe even have copies. Even if it's not uh, in paper, maybe electronic, which we, our students can come here and study. And again, Honorable Speaker, a majority of members here through CDF they have done a lot for this country. This is something which we also need to document. Uh, Honorable Speaker, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, Parliament is known to be a great building in this country. But uh, Honorable Speaker, as a Kenyan, when you walk around Parliament, there, there are signs displaying that you are not supposed to take photos, which is quite unfair. It doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. This is something which we need to change because Kenyans are proud of this house. They should come here, take photos. We should be able to create a museum where they can visit any time. They don't only have to listen to us uh, through television or radio. They can come here and learn what we are doing. Uh, Honorable Speaker, with those uh, few remarks, I want to second. Order, members. Order. Order, Honorable Halima. Honorable members, I propose a question, uh, which is that aware that the history of any institution is key to evaluating its development, further aware that documenting history provides a knowledge bank for future generations, Noting that the history of the Parliament of Kenya is largely unrecorded, scattered, and piecemeal. Further noting that most comparable jurisdictions have elaborate records of their history, which are periodically updated to capture new developments. Cognizant of the fact that the Parliament of Kenya marks its 115th anniversary this year, Having been established as a legislative council, LegCo, in 1907, further cognizant that the legislature has been transforming in the last century, both in mandate and composition, starting as a fused unicameral legislature to a bicameral one at independence to a unicameral legislature before again reverting to a bicameral parliament after the promulgation of the Constitution of Kenya 2010, Recognizing that, uh, re recognizing the many works of arts, including st statutes, um, frescoes, murals, and pictures connected with the history of the Parliament of Kenya, including the contributions of great men and women, families, architects, and politicians throughout the 114 years of the history of the institution, and its transformation and growth throughout the period. Now, therefore, in order to ensure the preservation of the history of the institution for future generations, this house resolves, one, that an appropriate, at an appropriate stage, the house appoints a committee comprising of not more than nine members to oversee the preservation of these histories for the posterity with special focus on the National Assembly. Two, that the copyrights of the history of Parliament of Kenya 
uh, projects be reserved for the benefit of Parliament and the people of Kenya. And three, that the clerk of the National Assembly puts in place and executes appropriate mechanisms to actualize this resolution. Uh, we, let's start with the Honorable Gikaria David. Member thank you, Honorable the... Speaker. And uh, let me take this opportunity first to thank uh, the President for having appointed me as a chair of the Energy Committee for the last four years. And I want to appreciate that among the so many members of Parliament 369, I was able to serve as a chair. And uh, a lot of uh, development, a lot of electrification has happened in the last four years under the Jubilee government. And I appreciate the very good work that uh, the Energy Ministry has been, has been doing. And uh, just to recognize that uh, being appointed to that position by the president was not a mean score. And the people of Nakuru, Taiwanese constituency appreciate and uh, I take this opportunity to thank the President for having me given me an opportunity and to <coughs> also appreciate that there has been other issues. Secondly, Honorable Speaker, is that... Hon Honorable Abdi Salan, what is out of order? Uh, I did not read the standing order correctly. I don't think whether the chair was appointed by the President to the position according to the standing order. He's supposed to be elected by members of the committee. Probably if his party has given goodwill, then it should be clear on that note. Otherwise, we are not aware of any appointment by His Excellency to Honorable Gikaria. Uh, okay, Honorable Abdisalan. I think Honorable you know, Gikaria. Honor, Honorable Chair, Honorable Speaker. Honorable you know, I, I don't know whether the member is a, a Jubilee member. Honor, if Honor, he's Honorable in ODM, Gikaria. so he wouldn't Honor, have Honorable Gikaria. You know, if he's a member of ODM, he wouldn't. Oh, no, you know, I'm, I'm letting you give your very good uh, uh, statement following the new reorganization within parliament, and I'm doing it at my discretion. So just contextualize it. Um, no, let Honorable Gikaria speak for himself. But again, just be brief and contextualize it uh, within the standing orders. Go ahead, Honorable Gikaria. But uh, be, be precise and uh, specific so that you can contribute to what is before the House. Uh, which member is that? Honorable Masara. Ma Madam Speaker, thank you for giving me this opportunity. But being we have a very serious business in the floor of the House now, Madam Speaker, is it in order for Honorable Gikaria to give us history of how we got the, being the chairman you, of You're out of order, Honorable Masara. Madam Honorable Speaker, Gikaria, honestly, go on. Honorable Gikaria, go on. But remember that the big chunk of your contribution the, be the, uh, Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, it's only Honorable Masara, he's not even realizing that we are in a motion which is talking about documentation. And part of me being a, having been appointed as a chair is part of the, the history that we are going to talk about. All the same, Honorable Chair, let me first of all thank the majority leader for having brought this motion on the floor of the House. And it is true, Honorable Speaker. I happen to have been a councillor in uh, Nakuru Municipality for 10 years, Honorable Speaker. And at the same time, I happen to have been elected as a mayor in 2008. And Honorable Speaker, if you go to the, the, the then municipality chambers, all the history, uh, particularly of the uh, you know, mayors and the sitting MCS, was all over the place. And you could be able to tell who was there. And I think history. It is something that is very, very important. And I want to appreciate and also uh, support this motion that, Honorable Speaker, that it is true indeed that we need, uh, as indicated, the official document, documenting of the history of the National Assembly. And not only maybe as much as we speak about the National Assembly, it's about the Parliament. And Honorable, uh, Honorable Speaker, if you look at what uh, uh, the Majority Leader has indicated, Honorable Speaker, it is true that uh, without history, this, this place remains uh, just something that nobody will ever. And I, and I want to appreciate more so, particularly on the resolution that has been said, that there will be a committee of nine, nine persons, or nine members of parliament, 
And, and uh, we are just hoping that these, these nine members will cut across, particularly uh, bringing on board those members who have served here for quite the ranking members. Uh, Honorable Jimmy Angwenye, for example, Honorable Speaker, would be a very good source of some of the is issues that uh, would be, he, and I, I'm not uh, advocating for Honorable Jimmy Angwenye, but having been in this parliament for more than five terms, then I think it is important for us to consider, as they are the people who will be mandated to pick the nine members, is that uh, we need also the ranking members to be able to give. And it is also more important, Honorable Speaker, is that this parliament has transformed from what we used to know uh, and now the current, including the digital uh, gadgets that we are using, both here in the chambers and also at the committee level. Honorable Speaker, this history is, is, is key. And it's going to bring, and those people who will come after us will be able to go back and they can be able to learn what was there. And, and uh, honorable, uh, honorable Speaker, looking at uh, uh, what has been suggested, uh, that the clerk should uh, expedite uh, this. Honorable Speaker, I think it is very, very important that before this parliament comes to its end, Honorable Speaker, that the clerk will be able to have done uh, these kind of uh, issues. Honorable Speaker, if you look at the Constitution when we changed our Constitution in 2010, it brought a lot of issues again back to Parliament, which again, those people who will be coming after us, and even our children, who will never be members of Parliament, or any other Kenyan who would want to see the performance, for example. The, 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 this Parliament and the last Parliament, Honorable Speaker, has really performed in terms of the mandate that has been given to this under Article Constitution, under Article 95, particularly on legislation. And Honorable Speaker, much as we will be uh, remembered for a few, uh, some of the things that should not be re recorded and should not be kept in the history, is the few negative things which have been fighting, particularly the fights around here in the chambers. And like the other day where a member was almost lost an eye. So these are some of the issues that we should also, much as we are doing this recording, Honorable Speaker, let there be the positive things only that should be able to be included in, the, in this. So with those few remarks, Honorable Speaker, I support this motion and I, I hope that uh, this is, is done faster, that uh, we, we can be able to uh, address this before uh, uh, the end of this uh, uh, parliament, the 12th parliament. But Honorable Speaker, with your permission, maybe I needed to ask for guidance. I don't know at whether it's now or later, because I needed some advice, and uh, not advice actually, but uh, your ruling on uh, matters to do with the elections, as my brother has just indicated here, elections of the chairs and the vice chair. Madam Speaker, I wanted you to give us a, a ruling on some matters which are very weighty that I witnessed in the last election uh, uh, when we came in, which could affect future elections for chairs and vice chairs. So I needed, if you allow me, maybe it's a quick thing I could be able to ask. Uh, no, no, not now, Honorable Gikaria. Okay. Uh, you may want to consult with the clerks okay. to find the appropriate avenue. Because okay. I don't know what it is you want to say, but it's you, actually you, certainly, about elections. you certainly cannot raise it now. Okay, Honorable yeah. Speaker. Get advice from the I clerks. I stand carried, Honorable Speaker. And I don't know whether, Honorable Gikaria, you, you are proposing to amend the motion. Because when you say that we should only record the positive and not the negative, uh, uh, <laughs> Honorable Leader of Majority... I, I have seen, you, actually... You, you will... Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're listening. When you're doing your reply, you, you should be able to uh, uh, respond to such issues. Thank you, Honorable uh, Speaker. Honorable Member for, Honorable Abdisalan, Member for Wajia North. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm part of uh, the history. <laughs> we are learning yeah, in, in, yeah. <laughs> in Parliament speaker. is that uh, Mr. Speaker, Gikaria. Honorable Abdisalan. Yeah, Honorable Gikaria was uh, a member of uh, the, is it the county assembly or the county council for two times. Recently, I saw him fighting on the floor of the house during the amendment. Little did I know that this knowledge was gathered. I think that this is part of history that we also need to learn. 
That said, uh, Madam Speaker, I think this is a long overdue, and uh, no doubt the history of uh, uh, legislation in Kenya dates back to the colonial era when uh, a legislature council was created by the East Africa Order Council in 19... Oh, sorry, and I think they had their first sitting in uh, 1907. If I'm not wrong, that was 17th August 1907. And uh, I think the first speaker was uh, Sir Humphrey. I think this is history that we really need to, to, to learn and appreciate. Uh, after it was established, I think the first, the first issue they discussed was uh, abolishing uh, the aspect of slavery. Uh, those were, that was the first issue they discussed. It is really important that uh, as a country, we, we, we need to learn uh, history. We really need to understand where we are coming from, where we are and where we are going to. Until we do the right documentation at the right time, then we will not be in a position to, 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 to really understand where we are coming from. We will not be in a position to do correct evaluation of uh, our performance if we don't do the right documentation. That said, Madam Speaker, I think uh, uh, even for us to do the right contribution on the floor of this house, then we must have documentation done and members you know, going uh, through this uh, documentation so that we can improve on uh, our contribution on the floor of this house. Madam Speaker, in the government sector and in the non-state actors, you will find that this performance contract that is signed between, uh, between, uh, between the staffs of uh, that agency and uh, their supervisors. But when, uh, we go, when, when we look at our, our context, we don't have signed performance contracts between us and our electorates. What is happening is that our performance on the floor of this house, both in terms of contribution on the floor of this house, and as well as in terms of development, ought to be documented such that when our electorates go through our performance, then they can understand that this member is performing well or is underperforming. I think that is the only aspect that, uh, that, that will really help them understand the performance of members uh, on the floor of this house. That said, uh, information is a uh, power, and uh, if uh, we don't do co collection of information at the right time, documentation of information at the right time, then we will not be in a position to make any sort of informed uh, decisions, uh, be it in terms of performance by our electorates, be it in terms of contribution on the floor of this house, in terms of uh, uh, development in our constituencies. So this aspect is really budget making. Uh, even, even, even as we make budget, Madam Speaker, I think we must collect the right information as per constituency, what, what was allocated uh, to constituency A, constituency B, and constituency so that we can even understand the disparities that exist and as we come to the floor of this house, then we can argue and say, look at the disparity between Wajia North constituency and that of uh, Nyeri or Muranga, where probably uh, most of the resources of this uh, country will be great. I think the, we can only make this kind of comparison if we do collection of information at the right time and share with members. So I, uh, it is really important that uh, that uh, we speed up uh, this process. It is really important that we speed up establishment of uh, a library uh, uh, such that members can go through this documentation and make uh, you know, the correct contribution on the floor of this house. I think this is long overdue, and uh, we, we should be looking at the aspect of even cascading down this to the constituency level so that we may have some kind of, uh, of, of, of uh, a library even at the constituency level, such that those uh, people who cannot come all the way to Nairobi can just access this information on daily basis at our constituency offices. And uh, as they engage us, then they will engage us from an informed point of, 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 of view. Madam Speaker, this is long overdue. I support and, uh, and uh, I believe that this, that, uh, uh, the Parliamentary Service Commission will speed up this process and ensure that the same will be done on time. Thank you. Member for Westlands. 
Uh, thank you, me, uh, Madam Speaker, to give me a chance to contribute this uh, very important motion. Madam Speaker, when you read uh, in the history, many all the parliaments like uh, the, 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 the Westminster, the, the British Parliament, Madam Speaker, there's a lot you can read and uh, uh, you understand how even the motions were developed, um, how they used to do things there, and we have learned from their, 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 their records, from, from their history, and many parliament have established from that. So the history of, of any institution, Madam Speaker, it goes a long way to give anybody coming uh, to learn about that institution and uh, the activities, events, and everything. Uh, when it's properly documented. And this is a permanent history, uh, records, Madam Speaker. So when it's properly aligned and, and, and given in an orderly manner, it will provide easy access. Like right now, you know, with the, uh, the coming of, of, of the, uh, the internet and all that, Ms. Madam Speaker, it's very easy to get information you just uh, key in and you find information readily available about anything. So we want this history that will be record, recorded, Mr. Madam Speaker, and remember every small detail that went on through the, the, the institution of parliament. The members who are there at a particular time, the contribution they made and all that, including recording that uh, uh, the, the member of parliament, Tim Wanyonyi, the first member of parliament to be elected on a wheelchair, Madam Speaker, is itself history. Because I went a hard way, campaigned, and won a seat, and won the second time. And this time around, Madam Speaker, I'll make another history by becoming the, uh, the governor of Nairobi. Because this will also be recorded as a person who has served in this parliament with this distinction and moved on to other levels, Madam Speaker. This is very important, Madam Speaker, as we look, because this parliament has been around for a long time. There are members who have served here and have exceeded the scene, but their contribution is still very, very uh, live. And we, if, if captured properly, Madam Speaker, it will, be, it will even help the future generation that will come in. When they're making contribution, they make reference, they can read and, and look at what was passed at that particular time, whether they're still relevant at this, uh, this time and all that, Madam Speaker. And this is very, very critical. I believe that uh, all of us, everybody who has come here in this parliament, Madam Speaker, whether elected or nominated, they have made their contribution. The speaker and the, 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 the staff of parliament and one of the, 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 the recent uh, events, Madam Speaker, during the COVID pandemic, it's when Parliament was sitting at a very, you know, you know, very unusual uh, time. It's also it's, it's, it's sort of history because we had to amend even our standing orders. We had to change how we operate. Members had to come here by being listed on, 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 in, 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 on an order paper, Mr. Speaker, that uh, if you, 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 when you look at that, it shows how parliament can adjust and also work within uh, certain parameters. So this is very important, Madam Speaker, the history of this parliament, the documenting of all events and activities, including like all committee, at the committee stage where people don't know how parliament functions. Sometimes people think that parliament only functions the plenary but the committees is where all the laws, the laws are refined and done at the committee stage. And most of the work is done at the committee stage. These are some of the things that uh, when somebody who is coming here are freshers, they can go to the library and dig in the books and look at the records and, and read about uh, maybe the proceedings of parliament and all that. So Madam Speaker, I support this motion and I, I believe that uh, it will go a long way to uh, document the activities of this house. And uh, Mr. Madam Speaker, thank you for giving me an opportunity to support.
Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I stand to support the motion as read and uh, moved by the leader of majority party in respect of documenting the history of the Parliament of Kenya. And probably in the fullness of time, and unfortunately it's not around, but it's on Hansard, it will be erroneous to talk of the National Assembly instead of talking of Parliament of Kenya. Prior to the 2010 Constitution, we had Parliament. Even at independence, we had a bicameral Parliament, and that is a historical fact we cannot erase. Secondly, as we stand now, we have also two chambers, the senior chamber being the National Assembly, and the busy body being the Senate. Nevertheless, we cannot assume they do not exist in history. Honorable Lohundo, you know, the Senate is part of Parliament, surely. The, That's the, why Senate, the Senate is part of the Parliament that you're part of. I think you need to withdraw that statement. They, they are elected members of Parliament like you are. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I stand guided and, and I withdraw. You can say upper and lower, but don't call them busybodies. Okay, I withdraw and probably substitute that this, the upper house being the National Assembly and the lower house being the Senate as currently constituted. So they become part and parcel of the history of the legislative arm. And you know, Honorable Lohundo, you know things happen mysteriously. You might actually find yourself being a member of the Senate one time. So, you know, you can never say never. So, I mean, it, it's only fair to be fair to them. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Yeah. That's unlikely, and I'm unlikely to go to the Senate in the foreseeable future because I think there is more work to be done in the National Assembly than in the Senate. But nevertheless, we appreciate the part and parcel of the National of Parliament of Kenya, and therefore probably the motion ought to be appropriately worded to include all the history, all the issues concerning the legislative chamber, the issue of the legislative chamber. Honorable Speaker, again looking at the motion, it, it sounds a bit vague, so to speak, because with the mention of the word appropriate stage, Indeed, it is wide open. I do not know when is the appropriate stage. A properly worded motion should be very specific in the timelines when it's supposed to be executed. As this stands, it is just a motion that anybody who is supposed to execute, even though it has been tasked to the, to the clerk, it might always argue it's not the appropriate stage. Secondly, Honorable Speaker, this is a fairly lengthy process to document history. It's a fairly time consuming and time involving. I'm not so sure, Honorable Speaker, as we stand now, even if we selected nine members who are fighting for their political survival, they will have the time and the energy to concentrate and document the history of this parliament. I know, Honorable Speaker, the attrition rate is, is, is alleged to be about 75 percent. What happens if you select seven, nine and all of them do not make it? It means the work that they would have started will be a drain, just a, will be a waste or a drain down the drainage. So probably mm -hmm. it could be the appropriate stage should be after in the next parliament, the 13th parliament. But again, we face the dilemma that a motion passed in one parliament not implemented might not, be impl might not be a motion standing in the next parliament. So obviously the motion, as well intended as it is, has got to a quite a number of practical challenges in terms of implementation, and I really probably if the, if the majority leader, ma leader majority party was here, we would have had to rethink, at, look at it, and probably Restate or, or set it afresh. Honorable Speaker, many of us when we grew up, we will always wished to sit in the National Assembly or Parliament and debate and deliberate on matters touching on the affairs of this country. And indeed, for the last four and a half years I've been here, I have, I have no regrets at all for being here, and I, I, I feel fulfilled that we have contributed and discussed on this matter. Obviously, Honorable Speaker, hardly do you ever get recognized for speaking in this house. 
especially on critical and serious matters. Many times, what is recorded outside then the newspapers and the media are those who take prime time to hurl insult against each other, and those who take time in funerals and public rallies to make statements that can actually inflame this country. We do hope with the recording of history, as my colleagues have stated, the work that's done in committees will be properly recorded. The work that is done in the committee of the whole house, where actual laws are thrashed, cleaned, and made, will be recorded so that history can record positive contributors, history can record those who have contributed in terms of quality and enriched policy and uh, decision making in this country. Honorable Speaker, the history is important. You can never disregard history. Those who go around pontificating and telling us that history doesn't matter are really self-serving. They do not understand. They actually do not mean what they are saying. You can never have a future if you have no history. You can never have a future if you don't remember the present. The present will be history tomorrow. So therefore, it is important for all of us to document what has happened in this country and to continuously remind our children, our grandchildren, where this country has come from. Honorable Speaker, if you go to the West, they pride so much in the history of their countries. Talk to an American, he will talk to you about civil war, He'll talk to you about the end of slavery. Go to UK, they'll talk to you about the, the Roman Empire. Go all over the world. It beats logic for us leaders to say history does not matter. If it didn't, didn't matter, then the wisdom of the judiciary, in the wisdom of many institutions, they will not be keeping history. If you went all over the world, if, for example, if you ask the Christians, they will tell you when was the first church established. They do it with a lot of pride. Look, uh, listen to the Muslims. They will tell you the history. Go to any fabled families. They will tell you their history. And that's why I urge all members at our individual capacity and individual level, even at family level, we must document our roots so that we must pass over to our children. They know exactly what happened, what happened and what laid the foundation. Honorable Speaker, with those few remarks, I support the motion. And I hope I'll talk to the majority leader to see if it can be amended so the final version truly reflects the correct context of the matter. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Yeah, that's just what I was about to say, that I wish the leader of majority was here because you have raised, uh, I think he must, he must have been listening. He's right here. I think you've raised a, a substantive issue that he needs to take into account. So, Honorable Laundo, you could have some exchange with the lead of majority on the same. Uh, member for Keio South, Honorable Kip Koge. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for also giving me this chance to weigh on this matter of our history and the bill uh, at hand. Honorable Speaker, this is a very important step that uh, the leader of majority is taking on behalf of this uh, house. Uh, I want to loud uh, uh, the speaker, Houdo, who has just spoken, talking about the issue of the committee that we will form to actually carry forward this, uh, this matter. Uh, it should not only be the committee of uh, this house. It should also uh, involve those who have been here before, who are still alive, who can also assist in, in the history of, 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 of parliament. Uh, if you take, for example, why this history is, is important, there is no way you will ever know that we have moved from A to B. Like now, we have moved from uh, the time we used you know, to be digital, now we are digital, analog to digital. There is a time we need to even have uh, uh, the seats 
that we used to, that uh, our, 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 our former members of parliament were sitting on, preserved so that we will be seeing that you mean this seat, somebody else could have sat on it the way it is. We need to see. We need our grand, grandchildren to see it also. So we not only need that history, we not only need to document, but we even need to have a parliament museum where we will preserve such a, 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 a furniture, that uh, old furniture that uh, we used to, to that uh, the, this house used to uh, use uh, earlier on. Another issue that, uh, uh, that uh, has come out clear is the contributions that our former members uh, uh, made, including ourselves now, should equally be well documented. We have uh, the history and, and, and people who have actually broken record by coming, by being here longer than uh, 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 we can imagine. I have in, in mind even my, my, my former MP, uh, Nicholas B. Ward, who has sat in this house for 30 years, and that needs to be documented because we need actually to know by now who has been here uh, longer than the other and who follows the individual who, has, uh, who, who is leading in that. That is the history we need in this parliament. There is no way we can have other countries uh, like Britain, America. The other day when we visited a, a, a state in America, you could see they have preserved their, uh, their parliamentary history. You could see there is a book written there, the history of uh, parliament in United States of America. So we need to follow uh, suit because we can borrow a leaf from the countries that have actually documented history of their uh, uh, parliamentary house so that we, uh, we, we, we will have our work easier when we, uh, we will be carrying out uh, this, uh, this important uh, task. So I want to commend the leader of uh, majority and let us identify the right people to carry out this task. Because it's not only that it will be carried out here, because you'll need to go out there to interview uh, uh, people, interview the elderly, uh, read books. It will, it will take time and it will, uh, we need resources also because you cannot handle that, uh, that task without uh, the, the, the necessary resources and the technical know-how. Otherwise, uh, Honorable Speaker, I support. Honorable Francis Masara. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, today I'm a very happy person. I'm very happy because the right things are happening when I'm still in this house. I want to appreciate the work done by the Majority Leader, Honorable Amos Kimunya, for presenting such a motion at the right time. Without history, actually we cannot know what happened before we came in to this country. Therefore, I want to say I'm supporting this motion because it will help the current generation and even future generation to understand the history of our parliament. Madam Speaker, I happened one time to visit the oldest continuing parliament, that is the Isle of Man in Britain. If you go to that parliament, if you are given two hours, they'll take 30 minutes and uh, there's a specific officer who will take you through the history of that parliament. By the end of, this, by, by the end of such a, that officer's presentation, you ask very little questions about the parliament. And then you get enriched to an extent when you are going to contribute now uh, to them, you, you are contributing from an informed position. Madam Speaker, also, I want to say that today is a very good day. The community you are coming from, as much as other communities are struggling to maintain their, 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 their traditions, they have tried. Therefore, the, uh, today God has done a good work that you are the person sitting on the, the chair to officiate the motion. So history will also be written that you are a, uh, you are a, 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 a leader from that community is going also to vie for governorship. That cannot go unwritten. You know, if we don't we don't put this, this, such a information into documentation, people will, may not know. But I'm speaker, remember, the reasons why I'm supporting this motion. 
when affirmative action was introduced in this country, many female MPs were nominated, but in the subsequent election, some of them got elected. And we can give example of Emilio Diambo. If you can't read the history of this, this, this uh, August House without mentioning the, the name of Emilio Diambo, for her contribution. So if you don't document such a things, nobody will ever know. And at a given point, you know, there will come a time when we, men, people will be crying that men should be, be given opportunity to lead. Then we'll give example when there is history that there was a time when women were given opportunity and they excelled in their leadership. But I'm simply having said that, if we succeed, of course I know we're going to succeed, we need also to start an institute where ranking member, those who have contributed, imagine the contribution of Anyang Nyongo, Orengo, Duali, those, uh, 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 the contribution of the late Jakoyo Midiwo, Ouma Muga, Madam Speaker, such a people who are still alive, if any case, they don't, those who have not gotten opportunity to be elected again and to serve in this house, they can serve as lecturers to other parliamentarians in an institute which is started by the National Assembly, Madam Speaker. At times, I look at our country. If you look at other countries, like America, once you serve in a position, you are, you are not left to retire at home with the wealth of knowledge somebody has. But in Kenya here, once you leave, the, you exit the office, Madam Speaker, nobody cares about you. But remember the investment the country has in, uh, have, uh, have put on such an individual. If they can be used in an institute, based on this history, then this country will be a very rich country, Madam Speaker. Moving forward, I want to say that history today, and I'm happy that I got opportunity to be in this house this uh, particular evening. Uh, the, fifth, uh, uh, the fifth has been talking about history. That's Honorable Larela Molodinga. And he has been very categorical and passionate about history. And more so the history of our country, where we were, where we are now, and where we want to go. We cannot project where we want to go if we don't know where we were yesterday. We cannot succeed tomorrow if we don't know what happened today. Madam Speaker, history help is like a foundation. It guides us on how to move forward. It reminds us of good things and bad things which happen, and then we make information based on those histories. But I'm speaking, this is a very good motion of which, even if we have to appoint nine members, but I request that even those members who are not here but worked for this parliament, who contributed, who were elected two or three times, need to be included in that committee so that we can exploit the wealth of knowledge they had during their time. And I want to support that those who have been here for a long time need to be given opportunity. Naomi Saban has been here for as long as you can remember. And Jimmy Angwenyi, Adan Kainan, those are the people whom even if they are not elected or not elected, you can't erase what they have in terms of knowledge for this, our great parliament. Should we succeed to do this, history will judge as well. Because those who will be reading, they'll refer and they'll ask who initiated this and who were there by that time. And I can tell you, our name will be written somewhere. And I'm sure when they will be writing that history, they'll write that Honorable Peter Masara contributed on this particular day, Madam Speaker. Thank you, and may God bless you. Honorable Kaki. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to contribute to this motion on official documentation of history uh, of the National Assembly. Uh, Honorable Speaker, this is a house that represents, that seats the representatives of the people of Kenya. Those who have been elected to deal with issues of this country. And there are so many great men and women of this country who have come, handled serious issues of this country, and left a, a footprint that we may not be able to talk about today. I would like to thank the leader of majority uh, this evening for having come up with this motion where we are going to come up with a committee of a few members, uh, stated as nine members, who are going now to deliberate on how this can be done. This is indeed a noble 
activity uh, having been done by the leader of majority, and I would like to congratulate him. Honorable Speaker, to note that this parliament is 114 years. I think it shows that we have enough time, more than a decade, having started in the pre-colonial times, during the colonial and the days of after colonialism, where many people have served and where this history needs to be documented. Honorable Speaker, I thank the, the leader of majority because he's focusing on the National Assembly. And since he's the one who has come up with the initiative, I think uh, then the Senate can catch up on the way or uh, find a way of um, also showing them the importance of this because the Senate has also done quite a lot uh, uh, for this country in the last 10 years that it has been there. Honorable Speaker, I believe that uh, as the nine honorable members uh, have been identified, as the other members who have spoken before me very well, like the Honorable Masara who is just leaving, uh, has said that it is important to give those who have been here for long, those who may have the, the memory of what used to happen, and also take advantage of uh, the digital era, where a lot that has been done in the, next, uh, in the last 10 to 15 years has been documented. Uh, Honorable Madam Speaker, I see an opportunity where the work that has been done in this house through legislation, through oversight and um, budget making, being documented and being used by our young generation, even to, uh, to, to come up with investment, whereby they are going to use YouTube, TikTok, to showcase what goes on in this, this parliament, Honorable Speaker. Uh, this is a house where there is a lot of information sharing. This is a house where there is a lot of comedy and I would not like the, the violence to be documented, just as uh, my, my colleague had said. But there is a lot that young people of this country can document. Uh, Honorable Madam Speaker, I would also like to say that they'll not be reinventing the wheel. Because as I looked at this motion, Honorable Speaker, I've realized that there are other parliaments that have already done it. So most likely this committee will be looking at what other parliaments have been able to do and also trying to be innovative and relating it with the case of Kenya. Uh, Madam Speaker, in all uh, situations of this country, in uh, ministries, in uh, semi-autonomous agencies, our parastatals, there has been a lot of monitoring and evaluation that is going on uh, to a level of coming up with a department of monitoring and evaluation in, in different institutions. So Madam Speaker, I would also like to suggest that this is something that this committee can also identify as an opportunity where they established a full-fledged department that checks on what goes on every day, what is interesting, so that it can be documented, so that at the end of parliament, like a time like this, then they'll just be putting it together. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I also would like to say that this may not be the best time uh, to come up with this committee, as much as I support that it happens today. In the future, Madam Speaker, they can make a decision to, to have this committee a year before so that the committee that is identified has uh, adequate time, they are in the right frame of mind because this is something that requires time and we know that a time like now, six, seven months before election, uh, even uh, the members that we are targeting, like the Honorable Shaban, the Honorable Jimmy Angweni, the Honorable uh, Keinan, and others who have been here three, four times, uh, Honorable Speaker, if it was earlier, they would have a much better um, uh, state uh, to deal with this important uh, matter. Honorable Speaker, um, uh, I would like also to say that uh, the future of Parliament, uh, especially uh, this 13th Parliament, Honorable Speaker, has a lot to be documented. This is the time we experienced COVID-19 that we had never experienced before. And I, I hope that in the future, we will not be in a situation like this. I hope that we would, we would not. It will be useful to document what the leadership of this house, uh, our, our very own speaker, the Honorable J.B. Muturi, and the leadership of Parliament, the way they became innovative, ensuring that Parliament uh, conducted uh, its mandate without being stopped by, uh, by the, the COVID-19. So I hope that this will be documented so that it indicates the work that Parliament uh, had to do, especially our leadership, and the fact that work didn't stop because of a pandemic. Honorable Speaker, I believe that Parliament never looked this beautiful uh, many years ago. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I've actually seen uh, photos of uh, people like the Honorable Kalonzo Musioka, the Honorable Charity Ngilu, 
uh, even a former member called the Honorable Mwango Ivuti, seated in this house in forms. And Madam Speaker, uh, as my colleagues have said, this needs to be documented so that young people can appreciate where we came from. It was not this beautiful. It was not this beautifully marked. We didn't have the red, I mean, seats that we sit on today. And even Madam Speaker document that these beautiful seats we have here were not imported, but they were done by an institution of this country. I understand that they, it was prisons, Madam Speaker. These are things that we can appreciate by, uh, by having uh, this um, documentation that is being raised by uh, the Honorable Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, I would also like to say that this is not an easy exercise. It is an exercise that requires uh, proper funding, resources, an expert consultant, because it will showcase work done by an arm of government. So I hope that the Honorable uh, uh, Lead of Majority is also thinking of a situation that this is been going to be financed, identify maybe the best consultant who has done it before so that it comes out the way uh, uh, the Honorable um, uh, Majority Leader is envisaging. Madam Speaker, I've seen that the uh, Parliament uh, of UK has recommended how Parliament evolved from the early days up to now. I, I believe that we have had wonderful speakers, starting with our own, own speaker, Honorable J.B. Muturi, the Honorable Marende. I was not here, but I can like recall what I used to, to, to watch him do in this house. And these are things that our children will appreciate and get it on their phones at the, just at the push of a button, uh, Honorable Speaker. So it will not only be documented and keeping it in a cupboard, but it is documented and using the contemporary means available today so that it is shared uh, as wide as possible. And also, Madam Speaker, use it as a money generating activity because if it is interesting and it is in YouTube, then Parliament can make uh, money out of it. Honorable Speaker, I would like to, to also say that a lot of work goes on in committees. And there are people seated somewhere in this country who may not have seen their members of parliament speak on the floor of this house. It is important to showcase what goes on in these committees. What is it that these members said, although they can get it on Hansard, but I believe that when we come up with a committee like the nine uh, member committee that has been uh, discussed uh, this, after, this evening, that it will also indicate what goes on in committees, legislation, taking all these bills through uh, interaction with the, with the community through public participation, and interacting with petitions where it even gets hot at times. Madam Speaker, I believe that this is, going to, this is a wonderful and noble idea that uh, our majority leader has come up with. And I think it deserves to be given the best attention and also to be given uh, as much support uh, uh, that can be given. Honorable Speaker, thank you so much. I would like to thank you for giving me the chance and also thank uh, uh, the people of Kitui South for electing me to this house and giving me a chance to talk about the history of Parliament this evening. Thank you. Um, hmm. I call upon the member for Karachuanyo, Honorable Okuoma, Okuome Adipo. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to comment on this important issue. Let me note, uh, Madam Speaker, that history is very important for human beings, whether in relation to an individual or whether an institution. When I see it here, that the parliament or the National Assembly was started in the year 1907, that important information alone makes me excited. I begin to feel that a member, I'm a member of an institution which has gone through stages and progress bringing us to what we are today. Recording this and make it uh, be known to all and sundry and also to those who are coming after us, I think by itself is a very important thing. We should do it. I do know that there was a time this parliament existed when there was no black man sitting in the chamber of parliament. All those are important for us to know today. 
whatever they were discussing, whoever they were, I may not know. But what they did is a process that brought our today's time. If this is recorded and we know it, we will find this information very useful to us. We should not deny ourselves such important uh, information. Then it came later when Legislative Assembly came, the Jiko aside, see the author of the motion putting it. That Legiko, we, we just hear about it, but we may not get proper and good details of it if, like what we would have got if we, 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 we had this recorded well in the format I think uh, we are trying to put in place. They did their part. And then came the current parliament, the way we know it, after the year 1963. All that kind of information is important. The transition from before 1963 to the period of independence up to now is a, another very important sector of our progress politically. We need this reflected in documents. And we are lucky that today we are talking, we can talk digitally. We can store the information digitally. And therefore, what we are discussing is clearly possible. We should make use of that privilege that we have. I know we are very important people in, in our history, parliamentarians, people who made history. They were known the world over. They left their names in our records, probably unwritten. These are people we should be able to know by name and the contribution they made to this great nation. What we are trying to do will make information about these people available. And that information can be useful to us. Let me state also that whatever happened many, many years ago are, not, are, not, are still relevant even to the present time in some cases. We can borrow the good that happened at that time and use, uh, use them for today. But if we don't have any records of them, we may be missing a very important um, information or something important for us that we can use either in parliament or outside it today. Madam Speaker, I do support this motion because I know it is useful for our knowledge today and in future. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable Arbele Malimo, member for Lysamis. Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this gracious opportunity uh, to add my voice in regard to uh, the documentary of the history of the National Assembly. Madam Speaker, world over, uh, history is what is the benchmark of every development in uh, this country and also world over. Madam Speaker, I know very well that Parliament is going to mark its 115th anniversary this year since the beginning of LEGICO, what is known as Legislative Council, in August 1907, which actually many of our forefathers have taken part and parcel uh, in UK. Unfortunately, those people who have actually participated in LEGICO, and some of them are actually during the Mau Mau period, uh, have not been recognized, and some of them still believe that one day they will be able to recognize 
in the history of this country so that people can appreciate their effort because it is actually that logical which led to the birth of the National Assembly, which I am part and parcel of today, that indeed I'm very grateful that myself, being the member of parliament for Isamis, I have always looked at the National Assembly and the debates the members of parliament are, are taking, uh, are having, that when I was even a student in school, Madam Speaker, I used to think that one day in history, I will be able to occupy one of the seats here. And indeed, that has come, that, that has come to being, and that I'm very happy, and I'm one of the members of parliament serving uh, in the 12th parliament, and therefore, it is indeed a good progress. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, this transformation, therefore, of, uh, from LegiCo to, uh, to this National Assembly, I also happened to travel to UK one time to a place called Isle of Man. Madam Speaker, I came across that uh, civilization started there, that I could not believe in the year 18, 1815, there was a national assembly running in UK in a place called Isle of Man. Today, all parliaments, including Kenyan parliament, we will be able to have some benchmark with uh, the government of the uh, United Kingdom, and many parliamentarians happen to go there. I got the privilege to travel all the way to UK that Isle of Man, and indeed, uh, it is worth uh, uh, going there. And uh, therefore, Madam Speaker, our Constitution, 2010 Constitution, also recognizes and respects that transition from during the time of LegiCo to, uh, to the current uh, uh, National Assembly practices. I also want to recognize our speakers Definitely, National Assembly cannot just go along without mentioning one of some of our great speakers. Madam Speaker, we have speakers like Honorable Marende, Honorable Muturi, our current speaker, and who is also vying for presidency in this country. We have Ole Caparo, and without forgetting, Madam Speaker, we had uh, Honorable Bonaya Godana then, and uh, we have also one of our distinguished sons of this land, called Honorable Farah Ma'alim. Uh, Madam Speaker, with those few remarks, it is very important that we try to form a committee because history of parliament, we have uh, statues, we have uh, some artifacts, we have uh, materials that needs to be put in place for generations to come after us for them to understand the long journey the journey we have come through from the time of LegiCo until today. With those few remarks, Madam Speaker, I support. Thank you. Honorable Mwali Ombiti, member for Masinga. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity to be able to, he to hear my views on the history of Parliament. Uh, history is very important because it's the one that uh, tells us how we have progressed, how we have developed from the time memorial to the time we are now. And it informs the future generations on where we have come from and where we are going. History should be written for this parliament so that uh, the people that, uh, that will come to this parliament in the future, in 10 or 20 years to come, they will be able to read and know where the parliament started, who were the speakers at those times, who were the, the clerks at that time, who were the members of parliament at that time, so that we can be able to know how their debates were, maybe some comments could come from their debates and be able to know how the debates were being conducted by those days when we were colonized. So 
I am sure that uh, the nine member committee which will be able to, to be put aside to put this together will be having a lot of work to do because we, we have let all the old people that were members of parliament before and they have now gone. So some of the things will not be able to gather them because we don't know some of the histories because the old members are passed on. But we need now to develop these, these books so that we can put them in the, in, the, in, in the libraries for the future generation, the future legislators to be able to come and read the history of this parliament so they can know even how much even the members of parliament were earning, understand? They used to earn 35,000, they used to earn 70,000, and now where we are now. So it is very good history for us to document so that we can also have an history with ourselves. With those few remarks, Madam Speaker, I support. Thank you so much. Member Foroiro. Uh, asante sana B speaker kwa kunipatia nafasi hii ya kuweza kuchangia jambo muhimu na la maana la historia kuwa na mpangilio ambao wengine wangeweza kurudi nyuma na wakaangalia ni wapi watu walianza kusema kweli B speaker uh, hapo mwanzoni labda hakukuwa mbunge katika eneo hili letu la Kenya lakini kuna ile siku uh, kulikuwa na utekelezaji wa maendeleo hasa maendeleo ya kisiasa tukitumia uh, um, bunge kama kielelezo au kama barabara ya kuwa na uiano na maendeleo ya kisheria hasa ya kiuchumi na ni kutokana na mwanzo ule ndio tumekuja mpaka tukafika sasa hivi kama hatuna historia ambayo imetengwa na imesajiriwa vizuri watu wanaweza kuangalia nyuma wa, au bere basi tutakuwa kama tumepotea wale ni washukuru sana wale wametoka na hayo mafikra ya kuona ni muhimu kuwe na historia ambayo iko na mwanzo na itakuwa ikiongezwa mara kwa mara bi speaker katika maendeleo ya bunge hili sasa tuko tuanze hata kama viti ambazo tunatumia sasa na vipasa sauti zile tunatumia hapa wakati tulianza kama tarakilishi haikuwa pare lakini kwa sababu ya utaratibu na teknolojia ile imekuwa ikionekana na kutekelezwa katika maeneo mengine ni kutoka hapo na sisi tukajiandaa na kujaribu kufikia wale labda wa yetu lakini hayo kama hakukuwa na historia pahali watu wametoka au pahali maendeleo ile imetoka basi itakuwa ngumu sana kutekeleza. Kwa hivyo mimi nimesimama kuunga na kuomba hata wale wengine ambao wako hapa na wako na ujuzi na wako na historia hata wale wako nje ya bunge hili waungane na sisi tuweze kutengeneza historia nono ambayo itakuwa ya kusaidia na kuelekeza bunge letu mbele. Mimi nimesema hayo nikiunga na kusema shukrani hata kupatia mwanya wa kunena lile. Asante. Member for Sigor, Honorable Chakapong. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Chair, uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, for this opportunity. I stand here to support, uh, support the motion uh, that uh, it is important that we need to document uh, the history of this house for our future uh, generations to be able to follow what has been happening uh, from the time this house began. So I think it's a good idea, and uh, I wish that everybody supports that, so that people coming after us should be able to really know uh, uh, from the time this house began what has been happening, uh, what has transpired here, uh, who was here, and what contributions they made that has changed uh, this country to this far. For that, uh, Honorable Speaker, I support. Thank you very much. Now, there, there being no further interest, 
I call upon the Honorable Major Leader of Majority to make a reply. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I want to thank the members. I was actually very excited to see the interest uh, that uh, this motion has, uh, has had with the, uh, the members who've contributed and uh, that members appreciate uh, the need for this documentation. And uh, uh, I also take note of some of the comments that were made by the members, including the Honorable Udo. I believe he had some issue with uh, uh, two issues in terms of why the special focus on the National Assembly. And uh, like I, I did mention, uh, the, the people have always known Parliament as, as, as this Parliament. Uh, in fact, when you even say you are a member of Parliament, uh, people hardly think of senators as members of parliament, never mind that they also decided to style themselves as senators so and so instead of <laughs> member of parliament. Uh, uh, so uh, the special focus on the National Assembly is obviously that that's what people have known. This is what has been in existence for the 115 years. The Senate, as we know it, has only been existent since 2010. And, uh, once we have documented what has happened in the National Assembly, which we have control over as National Assembly, we kind of have our own committee, we have our clerk to do it, and it's our own initiative, then we can invite the Senate to ride on us and ride on our uh, experiences, and they can document their 10 years in existence, uh, building on the same. But uh, I, I believe uh, somebody has to do the start, and to avoid complications that come with uh, joint teams, uh, when one has 114, 15 years of history and the other one has only 10 years of history, we might end up with uh, 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 something, some complications in that committee and going forward. So I'd rather we start with the National Assembly and then uh, we will uh, move to the next level. I think the other issue was what, what do we mean by an appropriate stage? Uh, when the committee will be appointed. Uh, with the passage of this motion, which I'm sure will be passed at uh, the next time when the question is put, it will now trigger the actions, uh, some, a set of actions, including identification of the names, and when they are processed then through the House Business Committee, it will then be brought to this House. So that appropriate stage uh, we will now, it's, it's dependent obviously on when this motion is passed, and I'm glad we have been able to process it this fast and this early. So that's probably the two concerns, otherwise everything else was in uh, agreement. And what I would want to assure uh, you, Honorable Speaker and the House, is that uh, uh, at the next meeting of the House Business Committee, we will be reporting obviously the progress on this motion and triggering the other actions that will be necessary so that to realize the appointment of this committee uh, to start uh, working with the technical teams to, so that before, between now and the time we adjourn in June, we will probably have set the stage for the 13th Parliament to continue this documentation uh, through that committee or uh, uh, a successor committee. So, Honorable Speaker, I believe with those who are, uh, Thank you also for uh, being there for the House. And uh, I know you would have wished to contribute in your own capacity. Uh, but uh, we will, any views that you have, uh, we will be happy to incorporate as we go forward. And I would look forward to you even being part of the committee, especially with your, the experience you've had from the chair and in liaison. And uh, a few other members, we, we can, so there's still an opportunity to, to, to be of use to this venture. Uh, with those words, I beg to reply. Uh, well said, Leader of Majority. We, we, we will defer the putting of the question until when we have it next in the order paper. Next order. Order number 19, the Wildlife Conservation and Management Amendment Bill, Senate Bill number 30 of 2020, second reading. Leader of Majority, do you have a brief from the Chair? Yes, indeed, uh, the, the Chair of uh, 
the Committee on Environment, there has been changes in the chair, and uh, they're also very busy on the, on the supplementary budget and had requested that this uh, business be placed at another date when they will not be uh, engaged on, on this budget matter. So I would wish that this be stepped down uh, for now. It is so ordered. Uh, order number 19 is stepped down for now. Next order. Order number 20, the Mental Health Amendment Bill, Senate Bill number 28 of 2020, second reading. Again, I hope lead of majority have a brief. Yes, uh, Honorable uh, Speaker, again, the chair of the uh, Health Committee, which has been processing, I think they are here to bring a report on this, and uh, they have requested that we give them more time um, to then uh, to, to process the, the matters within the committee, report to the House, and then be in a position to move this bill. So I'd wish again also to ask for this to be uh, stepped down for now. I order for the stepping down of uh, order number 20, the motion on order number 20, until uh, it comes in further. Next order. Order number 21, the Children Bill, National Assembly Bill number 38 of 2021, second reading. Read of majority. Yes, uh, and Speaker, this is my bill, and I'm prepared to move. But uh, the committee and also the, uh, the ministry are having uh, a meeting this weekend with a, a couple of other uh, stakeholders to fine tune the issues within the bill, which uh, it would be good to get that feedback so that as I move, I would also have the benefit of the stakeholder uh, inputs into the bill and uh, also the members who have the benefit of the report, which I'm told will be ready by next week. So again, um, I would ask that we, we step this one down for, for, for now. Uh, it is so ordered. We shall step down the debate on order number 21 until it comes back on the order paper. Next order. Order number 22, the Advocates Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill number 43 of 2021, second reading. Read of majority. Again, uh, Honorable Speaker, the Chair uh, of the Departmental Committee of Justice and Legal Affairs, uh, I think the committee is still uh, debating on when it would be appropriate to bring this bill. Uh, and uh, has asked that we step it down until we get advice from the committee. So I'll be waiting for that advice from the chair of the committee on when they are ready to move uh, this bill. Um, so for now, we can uh, step it down. Okay, and I, I, I heard you, Leader Majority, saying that uh, next week will be a budget week, and you know the season where we find ourselves in. So you, you will have to push the chairs uh, unusually hard for obvious reasons. Um, I go on to order that we step down the business in uh, uh, order number 22 until it comes back in the order paper. And with that, honorable members, honorable members, the time is now 6.43 p.m. And this house stands adjourned until Thursday, 10th February, 2022, at 2.30 p.m.
rangi ya kesho anarudia eh ah ndapalaka hiyo kuna document nimeambiwa nitakuta hapa gani